Valen, Guardians of Hades Romance Series, written by Felicity Heaton, narrated by Eric G. Dove. Chapter 25 Valen didn't hesitate, not even when he knew the consequences of breaking the rules and daring to enter Mount Olympus again, a place Zeus had banished him from on penalty of death. He stepped. Darkness whirled around him, the sweet comforting embrace of the underworld, and then it parted to reveal the bright white and gold city of Mount Olympus as it climbed toward the endless blue sky. He growled and stepped again, focusing on the location at the top of the mountain where he knew Ava would be, and ignoring the voice screaming inside him that told him to go back to the mortal realm, that this was all a trick designed to make him break the rules. Zeus wanted him dead and had found the perfect way to make it happen. Because Valen couldn't leave Ava here, wouldn't let her remain in Zeus's hands and suffer whatever plans he had for her. Ava was his. He had vowed to protect her, and he would, with his life if it came to it. He appeared in the middle of the pristine white marble temple high on the mountain and rushed through it, hitting the ground running. Maidens screeched and scattered, dropping their golden bowls of fruit and other offerings. He growled as he passed them, his black leather boots heavy on the white floor, and ignored their swift glances of fear, fear that stemmed from his appearance. He had no doubt that his eyes were black as night, his canines transformed into short fangs, and his fingernails little more than claws. One of the maidens near the grand doorway at the back of the temple dropped her wide, shallow golden bowl, spilling water across the marble. He hit it at a dead run and skidded through the doorway, fighting for balance, his arms flailing as he struggled to remain upright. His boots squeaked as he reached the dry marble and he kicked off again, propelling himself forwards, driven by the urgent need to find Ava. His eyes leaped between rooms as he passed doorway after doorway in the corridor, heading deeper into the temple. His heart thundered against his chest the hard, painful rhythm sending blood rushing through his temples, making his head throb. He had to find Ava. Ahead of him, the corridor opened out into a bright white space. Valen snarled and ran for it, awareness prickling through him and igniting a fire in his veins that consumed him. Zeus's bedchamber. He pushed harder, forcing himself past the limit, desperate to reach her. He was damned if she was going to wake to find herself in another strange place, the captive of another man bent on hurting her. He growled through his short fangs. She'd been so afraid when Benares had kissed her and knocked her unconscious, and he couldn't bear the thought of her going through that again, not when she hadn't even recovered from that mental blow yet. His boots squeaked on the marble floor as he ground to a dead stop in the middle of the room, his eyes on the enormous four-poster bed opposite him draped in sheer layers of white and gold that formed curtains across it, hanging from the solid gold frame. Ava lay in the middle of it, sprawled across the white sheets, her dark green halter top and black jeans and trainers a sharp contrast against them. Ava, he whispered and kicked off again, launched forwards with his heart in his throat and fear crawling through him. Fear that she would be aware of where she was, would be afraid that Zeus had done something to her. He wouldn't allow it. He would take away all those fears for her, somehow. Ava. Valen tore at the white and gold material blocking his way, ripping through it to get to her, leaving the layers in tatters and spilling scraps of them across the floor. He finally broke through. Stilled. Relief swept through him, strong and fierce, overwhelming him and stealing his strength. She was asleep. That relief gave way to fury again as he spotted the dark mark on her chest between her breasts and realized that she wasn't merely sleeping. Zeus had knocked her out. Fucking bastard, he spat and mounted the bed, his blood boiling with the dark need to avenge her. His uncle's death would be a good starting point. After how distressed she had been by the thought of Benares touching her, the idea that Zeus might have been out to do the same thing sickened him gave the darkness that lived within his blood free reign. It consumed him, and he snarled as he gathered her into his arms, rose onto his feet on the bed and turned to step back to his apartment, vowing he would return to end his uncle.
That uncle stood before him in the middle of the bedchamber, the bright light reflecting off the polished gold plates of the armor he wore over his short white robe. Valen snarled flashing fangs and stalked toward Zeus, the fury mounting in him, drawing the darkness to the surface and giving it more control over him. You are banished from this realm. The fact that his uncle sounded so calm grated on his nerves and stoked the fury higher, until it blazed white-hot in his veins and pushed him to react, to lash out at the male who had dared to try to take Ava from him. There was no fucking curse. He knew that now. Zeus had always planned this, had intended to make the curse seem real by taking whoever he fell in love with, or whoever fell for him. He looked down at Ava in his arms, her face soft with slumber, untroubled now, but all that would change if she woke. Part of him wanted to get her away from this place before that happened, but the rest fixated on needing to know which it was. Had he fallen for her, or had she really fallen for him? Could she love him? He had imagined that his feelings for her were the reason Zeus had taken her. But what if he was wrong? What if she did love him, and that was why Zeus had stolen her, aiming to turn her against him or seduce her over to his side? He snarled through his clenched fangs. He would never allow that to happen. Ava was his. Valen slowly lifted his eyes back to his uncle and held Ava closer to him, so her cheek pressed against his chest and shoulder, and her black hair tickled his neck. She was so warm. So his. He narrowed his eyes on Zeus. I was happy to obey that banishment, too. But this, taking Ava, you crossed the line and you know it. You wanted me to come. He flashed fangs again as his temper frayed, his fury getting the better of him, and took a hard step towards his uncle, showing him that he wasn't going to back down like a good little boy and do what was expected of him. You're a spiteful old bastard. This is entrapment. You wanted to make the curse look real but I'm not going to stand for it. So you will fight me? Zeus countered him, moving a step closer, and Valen wanted to punch that smug look off his perfect face. But he wouldn't. He was done doing everything people expected of him. I hate to disappoint, but I didn't come here for a fight. I came here to take Ava home, and then you can punish me. Zeus's golden eyes widened almost imperceptibly. But Valen noticed it. It wasn't often someone managed to surprise the god of gods, but he had the feeling he had done just that. You knew coming here meant your life was forfeit. Yet you came anyway. Why? Zeus looked down at the precious cargo Valen carried, nestled close to his heart where she belonged. Valen dropped his gaze to her, too softened to pathetic mush inside as he gazed at her peaceful, beautiful face. Because I love her, he whispered, and a chill swept over him, spreading across his back and down his spine, and up over his skull as it sank in that he really did love her, as he had never loved anyone before. And I swore to keep her safe. He lifted his gaze back to Zeus and narrowed it on him. If you've laid a finger on her, I will not go quietly. I will fight you when I return. Zeus's right eyebrow rose slightly, another reaction Valen hadn't expected from the bastard. What makes you think I will just allow you to leave with her? Valen looked around him at the white marble bedchamber and pictured the city beyond it, a sprawling metropolis of temples that was densest at the base of the mountain where the minor gods lived, and the markets were held, and the servants' quarters had been established, and rose up the mountain, the number of temples growing fewer and their size growing larger as the importance of the god or goddess escalated. You'll do it, or I might be tempted to unleash a little of my anger on your precious city. He smiled as Zeus scowled at him, showing him that he intended to do it. He dared to wreak havoc on the city like that, regardless of the consequences to it and to him. This mountain is a tad steep, makes the positions of the buildings precarious at best. All I really have to do is shake the mountain, and many of those temples will fall. You think you have that sort of power? Zeus sneered at him and golden lightning crackled around his hands. Valen grinned. You know I do. 
I'll tear this fucking place apart. Everything you love in ruins. Zeus clenched his right fist, and a short, jagged, bright golden bolt of lightning formed in it like a spear. It's your choice, Valen said, ignoring the threat. Let me take Ava to safety, and I will come back and you can mete out your punishment for disobeying the ban you shoved on me centuries ago, when you let my sister die. Whatever you see fit, I'll take it without protest. He looked down at Ava, swallowed hard as his heart hurt, and then pushed all the somber and stupidly sentimental thoughts out of his head and faced his uncle. Even death. Zeus's eyes did widen now, and the golden bolt in his grip stuttered. You would die to protect her. Valen nodded. Gods, he would. He loved her that much. If it was the price he had to pay for her safety, then he would gladly pay it. His uncle's expression darkened, his broad mouth flattening and his dark eyebrows dipping low, forming wrinkles on his sun-kissed skin. Valen frowned right back at him, trying to make sense of the sudden shift in his mood. It was what Zeus wanted, wasn't it? He had taken Ava in order to lure him here and therefore give him a reason to kill him at last. Hadn't he? Maybe the bastard was just disappointed because he wasn't going to fight him. Sick fuck. That had to be it. Zeus had wanted him to come and fight for Ava, and he was pissed that Valen had chosen to calmly surrender himself in exchange for her. Maybe he was growing up after all. Before meeting Ava, he would have taken this opportunity to fight Zeus without even blinking, launching himself right into the fray and relishing the chance to land some blows on his smug face and the shot at taking him down. Now? He looked down at Ava and sighed. Now all that mattered was Ava, getting her to safety and protecting her as he had promised. She was more important than his need for revenge, more important than a feud that had been raging for centuries, more important than anything. He didn't want to leave her. Gods, he wanted to be with her forever. The thought of going to the Blessed Isles without her and never seeing her Never looking into those tranquil, tropical blue eyes, or hearing that bite in her tone when he had done something wrong, ripped his heart to pieces and made him bleed inside. But if he had to do it in order for her to live, for her to be free, then he would make that sacrifice and he would wait and pray for a day when they were reunited in the Blessed Isles. You do love her, Zeus whispered. Valen wanted to scoff at his uncle and call him a fucking idiot for taking this long to notice. I value her life more than mine. But if it's enough for you, then take it and let her live. She deserves it more than me. She deserves to be happy. And you don't? He glared at Zeus. You don't give a fuck about me, so drop the act. You took Ava because you wanted me here. You wanted me to break the rules so you could punish me. You wanted to take away the one person in this world who cares about me, all because of some stupid curse. Zeus sighed. I never cursed you, Valen. I only possess the power to say such a thing, not the power to make it real. You do that for yourself by believing in it. Valen growled. The bastard would pay for that for playing with his head and making him suffer all these centuries. He took a step towards his uncle, his boot striking the marble hard, and Zeus held his hand up. I did not take the mortal female in order to hurt her, or you either. Valen rocked back on his heel and eyed Zeus, trying to figure out whether he was telling the truth, because Valen sure as hell couldn't believe him capable of anything altruistic. Not anymore. I am doing it to keep a promise to your mother. That shook him to his core, to his soul, and he could only stare at Zeus as it pinged around his head and his heart, filling both with conflicting feelings. His mother. What promise? he snapped, and Zeus arched an eyebrow at him. Valen didn't give a flying monkey if his tone was disrespectful. He only gave respect where it was deserved and Zeus had given him no reason to believe he deserved it from him. After you had been returned to the underworld, Persephone made me swear to keep whoever you loved safe, so you would never lose a loved one again. 
but I could not believe what Helios reported to me. Fucking Helios. The bootlicking bastard was always spying for his beloved master, reporting everything to Zeus. I was not sure of your feelings for her, but I took her regardless. And now I am glad that I did, because I am certain you do love her. You were testing me by taking her. You wanted to see what I would do so you could see that I loved her. Valen wanted to gouge his uncle's eyes out with his thumbs so he would be as blind as he clearly already was. He had to be if it had taken him this long to see the depth of Valen's feelings for Ava, only realizing they were true just a few moments ago. No. Zeus shook his head, causing the waves of his dark brown hair to shimmer with gold in the bright light. His expression turned grim. I took her because demons were about to take her from you, a ploy to turn you to their side in order to save her, and that I could not accept. Because Zeus was the only one who got to fuck with his feelings like that. He looked down at Ava in his arms, heart clenching tight at the thought he might have been trying to save her from a monster far worse than his uncle right now. Zeus conjured a marble plinth, and on it appeared a shallow golden bowl of water. The water the maiden had been carrying into this room. Valen frowned at it and stepped closer, curious about what his uncle was up to and slowly beginning to believe him. That belief became solid and unbreakable as Zeus waved his right hand over the surface of the water, and it shifted to reveal his apartment. The succubus bitch was inside it, tearing it apart as she looked for something. A heavy weight settled on his chest, directly over the center of it, and he looked down at the amulet that hung there, the dark disc sitting above his heart, and the silver piece in it shining brightly in the ethereal light of Mount Olympus. Unable to find and take Ava, Jin wanted to take the next best thing back to her brother, the amulet. Benares had sent the group of demons to attempt to take it from him after all. They had to be working with whoever had arranged the attack on Ares in New York. Had to be. The desire to steal the amulet was all the proof he needed. The demons thought the amulets were the keys to the gates, that possessing one would allow them to open them and enter the underworld, or hold them open so they could destroy the gates and begin to merge the planes of the underworld and the mortal one. Karis had revealed he and his brothers had all been duped by their father, though made to believe the amulets were the keys, when in reality the key was in their blood. Hades had created the amulets as a ploy, a method of drawing out the demons who would be responsible for the calamity the Moirai had witnessed. Everyone but Karis hadn't been stupid enough to try to open a gate without one, mostly because there was a creature who guarded the other side, and the amulets were designed to protect them from those gargantuan monsters the power in them placating the normally violent creatures and rendering them safe and calm. Valen didn't fancy being squashed under their feet like a bug, or eaten alive, so he had never tried to open his gate in Rome without his amulet. The demons had seen him always wearing it when the gate was open, and had fallen for Hades' ploy. He watched Jin turning his apartment upside down and grinned. She was going to have to return to Benares empty-handed. Valen shifted Ava in his arms and looked across the bowl to his uncle. Soft golden eyes watched him, no trace of anger in them, only something Valen didn't want to study too closely, because he had been fooled into thinking Zeus had feelings before, and it hadn't ended well for him. Valen stared at him, a strange numbness encroaching to push out the warmth of Ava in his arms, and sending him back to centuries ago when he had last stood in this temple. Why did you let her die? Those words slipped from his lips and seemed to shake Zeus, because he recoiled and averted his gaze. He sighed. I was not able to save her. Valen blinked. Why? Zeus raised his gaze back to meet his, and remorse shone in it, making Valen want to be the one to avert his eyes now. She died in an area where no Olympian can see. Cold stole through Valen as he realized that was true. Calindria had died in the area their father used for his trials, and all of it was off the grid, so no god could interfere in the proceedings. You could have brought her back, though. 
You did it for those bastard fates, Valen barked, and his voice echoed around the enormous room, mocking him with his own words, igniting the blood in his veins again and making it burn with a need for vengeance. For justice. Zeus calmly shook his head. You know that was not possible, Valen. The manner of her death. Valen looked sharply away from his uncle as he cut himself off, hurt spearing his heart like one of Zeus's lightning bolts, and his eyes stung. He did know. He had known then, and he knew now. But it didn't stop the pain or soothe his need to make someone pay for what had happened to her. It only made it infinitely worse. It was a living thing, gnawing at his soul, constantly torturing him and tormenting him with how he had failed her, how he continued to fail her even now. The manner of her death had meant her soul had never been found, had never crossed over into the underworld. It was still out there somewhere, lost and waiting, or worse, captive. Tears lined his lashes and he blinked them away, refusing to let them fall and fought to master his emotions as they threatened to sweep him under and rouse the darker side of his soul again, with a bloody need for vengeance. He closed his eyes and reached for the connection they had always shared as siblings, one that had allowed him to communicate with her across vast distances, as he could with his brothers. That connection that was cold now, nothing but a void left behind inside him, a void left inside them all. It had been centuries, but her soul was still missing, held away from the underworld, from her home. He wanted her to find her way back, and he knew his brothers felt the same. They all wanted her to reach Elysium and pass her days there on the island, where they could visit her. Ava moaned and stirred, and he hushed her, brushing his lips across her brow and willing her to remain asleep a little longer. He didn't want her waking on Mount Olympus. She had already been through too much, was barely holding on, and he didn't want waking in the realm of the gods to be the final blow to whatever was happening between them. Ava knew about him, but he wasn't sure she had accepted the truth of him yet, or the world he walked in. Everything between them was so fragile right now. He breathed her in, that scent of roses and sin he loved so much, and prayed to whatever gods would listen to him that she would stay with him that she felt something for him that ran as deep as his feelings for her. Go, Zeus said. Valen looked up at him, cold stealing back into his veins as he remembered where he was and what he had done. He held Ava closer, the cold turning to ice as it froze his heart. Zeus had taken Ava to protect her, to keep a promise to his mother, but that didn't mean Valen was off the hook. He had still broken the rules of his banishment. Go, and do not come back, unless you have an offering, Zeus huffed, when Valen stared blankly at him, fighting to make himself believe what he was hearing. Do not look at me that way. Hades would kill me if I laid a finger on you. True, but he still couldn't believe he was being allowed to enter and leave Mount Olympus without being punished. And he had been given the green light to come back, too. Valen scoffed. Getting soft in your golden years, old man. Zeus's dark eyebrows dipped low and his golden eyes shone, the softness that had been in them a second ago obliterated by the anger rising inside him. A lightning bolt crackled in his hand. As much as Valen wanted another shot at his uncle, he had more important matters that needed his attention. Valen grinned. Maybe next time. Stepped. Golden arcs of lightning chased him into the darkness of the teleport to the underworld, and then out the other side into the mortal realm, but they merely danced around him, not touching him or Ava. He landed on the hillside in Rome, and that lightning struck the rods in the city, and thunder rolled across the land. Ava. He looked down at her in his arms as she moaned and wriggled again. He needed to take her somewhere safe, but he couldn't take her to his apartment. The only place open to him, the place where she would be most protected, because the wards surrounding it were impenetrable and ancient, created from the combined power of him and his brothers, was also a place where she might not be safe. Or she might be. It was a risk he had to take. He just hoped Escher wasn't in the mood to murder mortals today.
Chapter 26 Escher pressed the power button on the remote, calmly set it down on the low coffee table nestled in the center of the couches, and looked over to his right, towards the door of the mansion. Someone was coming, someone not of his blood. He curled his lip, rose onto his bare feet, and started towards the door. It slid open and Valen walked in. If it had been only his brother who had shown up on his doorstep, he wouldn't have cared, would have welcomed the company, in fact. But Valen had brought something into his home with him, something wretched. The mortal female. He narrowed his blue eyes on her where Valen cradled her to his chest. Temper, Valen snapped. His gaze leapt up to meet his younger brother's golden eyes. They glowed at him, warning him to tread carefully. Valen was the one who needed to be careful. He was the one in danger. Escher flashed his teeth on a snarl and crossed the long room to his brother. You dare, he hissed, and flung his arms to his right, towards where the doors into the courtyard had been parted to reveal the night. His hands shook as he pointed at the full moon, not needing to look at it to know exactly where it was, because it hung heavily over him tonight, pulled at him in ways he was too weak to fight. You dare bring that filth into my house on this night? Calm yourself, Escher. Valen set the mortal down near the door, slid it closed, and rose to his full height as he turned to face him. Last I checked, this was still our house. It belongs to all of us. You just get to stay here because you're daddy's precious little boy, because you're more fucked up than I am. Fucked up? He snarled and advanced on his brother. You want to see how fucked up I am right now? Valen stood his ground, chest heaving beneath his black t-shirt, the fight to control himself as visible as the one Escher waged. Back off, Valen snarled. He couldn't, not tonight. Valen should have known that. His brother's golden eyes flicked towards the door to the courtyard. A brief glimmer of remorse crossed them, and then they were cold again, hard and unrelenting. She stays. Valen folded his arms across his chest and placed himself between Escher and the mortal, protecting her. Escher's top lip curled back off his emerging fangs. She only gets to stay if we are interrogating her now, and that look in your eyes, that disgusting way you dare to block my path to her, says it is not the case. He sidestepped so he could see the wretched creature trying to discern what had gotten into his brothers recently to make them turn into pathetic males, so eager to please those who should fear them, those who would hurt them. No one hurt his family. He flashed his fangs at the wretch. He would make sure this one couldn't harm Valen. Valen appeared in his path, pressed his hands against his chest, and shoved him back. Calm the fuck down. He couldn't. Not tonight. On a snarl, he launched himself at Valen and stepped at the last second, disappearing and reappearing on the other side of him, in front of the sleeping female. He raised his right hand, growled as he felt his nails sharpen, and brought it down in a vicious arc aimed at her throat. Valen grabbed his arm and hauled it backwards before he could strike her, spinning Escher to face him. Escher grunted as pain exploded across the left side of his skull and Valen's punch drove him to his right, sending him sprawling across the tatami mats. He growled and shoved himself up, was on his feet in a heartbeat and on his brother in the next. He slashed his claws down Valen's front, ripping through his black t-shirt, and Valen hissed and stumbled backwards, evading his next blow. Calm down, Valen snapped, and blocked the rest of his attacks their forearms clashing hard, sending dull pain echoing along his bones. Calm down or I'll call Karis, because you're being a dick, and I thought you were stronger than this. Escher staggered from that blow, his hand dropping to his side as it registered and hit him hard. He stared at Valen, at the blood that trickled down his chest and soaked into his black t-shirt, and the cuts that littered his face. He had done that. He shoved his hands into his black hair, clawed it back and pressed his palms to the side of his head as he unleashed all his rage and pain in a roar. The mortal female gasped. Valen was by her side in an instant, not to shield her from him, but to coddle her. He could only stare as his brother tended to her, his actions soft and gentle, more than tender.
The sight of him acting that way brought painful memories to the surface of his dark mind, and he didn't want to entertain them, didn't want them invading his life again, not when he was struggling with the sway of the moon and the havoc it wreaked on him, and the darkness that pushed inside him. He edged away from them, each step more difficult than the last when the darkness wanted him closer to the female, his fangs in her flesh and his claws tearing her to pieces. His hands shook against the sides of his head, and the sound of water running outside stopped as the darkness rose within him, pushing harder and breaking through his carefully constructed barriers. Seizing control of him, Valen froze and slowly turned to look at him. Get a lid on that right now. He couldn't, not even when he knew that his power would hurt his own flesh and blood if he didn't get it back under control. Even Valen wasn't immune to it. There was water in him, just as there was water in the filthy mortal. Water he would command to do his bidding. He fought against his hands as they lowered from his head, warring with himself as he tried to stop his body from moving, the darkness from taking shape inside him and unleashing the other side of himself the side he loathed, but couldn't defeat. Take her away, because he could see that she meant something to Valen, and that hurting her would hurt his brother, his blood. He couldn't bear it if that happened. Take her away. It was hard enough to control himself around Megan, but he did his best because Ares was clearly in love with her and he wanted his brother to be happy. He wasn't sure he had enough willpower to contain his darker side if Valen added Ava to their group. She stays, Valen said, his tone brooking no argument, and Escher snarled at him. Valen huffed and eased back onto his feet, coming to face him. The wards are strongest here, and she has demons after her. They want to hurt her in order to turn me to their side, and the gods only know I would do it, Escher. I would do anything for her. Escher reeled from that blow, too, took another handful of steps backwards as it sank in swift and fast, making his head spin. Valen was already in love with her. Darkness surged, obliterating the happiness he wanted to feel for his brother on hearing he had finally found someone to love, devouring it as it demanded he sate it with blood and violence, because the wretched mortal might hurt Valen. He stared at her, weak but toxic. All mortals were the same. They were treacherous, cruel, vicious. He shook his head as his darker side whispered in it, words that tried to seduce him into surrendering to it, giving in and giving it control. He wanted to do it. He wanted to punish her for the hold she had over his beloved brother, turning him into a male willing to risk death and ruin for her. If he dealt with her, Valen would be safe. He had to protect his family didn't he? He could not allow anyone to harm them. A flash of his reflection whisked across his eyes, there and gone in a heartbeat, an image of his face daubed with blood and his eyes blazing crimson. He clenched his fists, felt them trembling and the blood in his veins vibrating with his power. The very air around him shook as the urge to unleash it grew fiercer. Escher, Valen whispered. You okay? Escher tore his eyes away from the female when Valen stepped in front of her, shielding her with his body, making it clear that in order to eliminate the danger the mortal represented to Valen, he would have to go through Valen himself. He could not hurt his brother. If he remained here, he would end up doing just that, whether on purpose or not. The pull of his power was too strong, controlling him too easily tonight. It would take only a slip in his control for him to do something terrible using their own blood against them. He took another step back and teleported, disappearing just as Diamond appeared in the mansion, his pale blue eyes filled with concern as they landed on him. Darkness engulfed him and he welcomed it, the brief connection it gave him to the underworld taking the edge off and helping him claw back some control. He hoped Diamond wouldn't follow him. He knew his brother had come for his sake, not Valen's, their bond so powerful that they could sense when each other was in pain, but he wouldn't go back. Diamond could deal with Valen in his stead, and call in their brothers. Hopefully, by the time he returned, the mortal would be gone. He landed on a rooftop overlooking the Shibuya district of Tokyo, 
a short distance from the mansion where it stood in extensive grounds near Yoyogi Park. He wasn't sure why he had picked this spot, because it was close enough to his brothers that he would be able to sense if they needed him, or because he was testing himself. Hundreds of mortals milled around below him, waiting at the lights at the busy intersection, some watching the giant television screens on the buildings overlooking the crossing, and others busy talking to friends. Cars sped along the wide street, heading beneath the building below him that formed a bridge over the road. More mortals spilled out of the section of the building to his right, from the train station there, some heading towards the famous meeting spot near the statue of Hachko, a faithful dog, and others hurrying for the crossing as the lights changed. Neon illuminated the entire area, including the pedestrian street to the left of the building opposite him affording him a clear view of everyone below him. He couldn't remember the last time he had dared to leave the mansion when the moon was full. The temptation to leave the rooftop and venture into his favorite Starbucks in the lower section of the building opposite him tugged at him, but he resisted it. It would be too much. The sweeping front of the building was glass on the level where the cafe seating was situated, revealing just how busy it was to him. Too much. He had never tried to enter the coffee shop and order a drink from the mortals when the moon was out on his side of the planet, let alone when the moon was full. It would be disastrous. Besides, it felt good up here, more relaxing than he had thought possible, everything rushing around him distracting him from the pull of the moon. The wind buffeted him as he stood on the roof, carrying the scent of snow and chilling him through his pale gray-blue shirt and dark jeans. It was peaceful to stand above the world like this, looking down on it like the moon that hung above him, casting its warm light on him and soothing him even as it tore at him, lured him into sinking into his power and unleashing it. The crossing lights changed again, and the mortals swarmed, forming a tight ball in the center of the road that broke apart a moment later as they went on their way. Ants, hideous creations of the gods. He sneered at them all. Escher closed his eyes, drew down a deep breath, and expelled it slowly, seeking balance again and restoring some control over himself. The wind picked up, whipping through his black hair, and he stretched his arms out at his sides and stepped up onto the edge of the building, letting it chill and shove at him. He opened his eyes, tipped his head back, and fixed them on the moon suspended overhead against the inky sky, faint stars shining around it. It pulled at him, full and beautiful, entrancing him and holding him under its sway, mesmerizing him. He lost himself in it, the sounds of the mortal world falling away from around him, and reached his arms up, stretching them towards it, part of him aching to take hold of it and bring it down to him. Heat spread across his left side. A metallic tang flooded his mouth. His hands dropped and he flinched as his left arm hit something and warmth bloomed over his hip. The odor of blood filled the air. His blood. Escher looked down at his side, and the blade protruding from it. A violet haze wobbled around the edges of his vision, and he frowned as he reached a trembling hand towards the black hilt of the dagger. Dark purple smoke swirled around the blade, writhing like a living thing, angry and agitated, hungry. He swallowed hard and gritted his teeth against the fire spreading through his side, sinking into his flesh and creeping into his veins. A hand appeared in view before he could reach the dagger, wrapped around the hilt, yanked it from his flesh. Escher flung his head back and screamed. Water exploded from the streets below, geysers shooting high into the night air as the pipes burst one by one, spreading outwards with him at the center. A deep voice echoed in his ears as he went down. Give your sister my regards. Chapter 27 Valen scooped Ava up into his arms, stifling a wince as the cuts across his chest stung, and carefully maneuvered her into a position where he wouldn't get blood all over her. He carried her over to the TV area on the right side of the long rectangular room and eased her down onto the couch, shutting out the way Diamond was glaring at his back, as if he was responsible for Escher's outburst and disappearance. Maybe he was. He had forgotten the moon was full. What's up with her? 
Diamond ended his call to their brothers and pocketed his phone as he edged closer, but didn't pass the barrier of the couches in the TV area. The whole damn section of the house seemed ridiculously out of tune with the rest of it, which Escher had kept more traditionally in line with old Japanese houses. The dining area at the other end of the long room had a low rectangular wooden table and seating more fitted to the mansion, but numbing cushions. He never had been able to get comfortable with the Japanese way of things. Sitting on hard floors just felt like punishment to him. Nothing. He finished settling Ava on the couch, stifling another wince as he stuffed some cushions around her so she would be comfortable, his focus wholly on her well-being rather than his own. Little frowns flickered on her brow, her eyes still a bit too glassy for his liking as she stared at him, miles away and locked in her own body. He hoped to the gods that she hadn't come around at any point on Mount Olympus, and that was the cause of her current stupor. He was banking on it being just the after-effects of being hit with Zeus's power to render her unconscious. Nothing, Diamond scoffed and moved a little closer. Nothing my arse. Valen looked over his left shoulder at his brother, rose back onto his feet and came to face him. Nothing. Diamond shook his head, and it was a wonder the soft white spikes of his hair didn't collapse. How the fuck he managed to style it that way, Valen had never figured out. It was either some sort of magic or Hong Kong and Japan had incredible hair products. Don't lie to me, brother. Diamond pulled his long black coat off, revealing his standard dark navy roll-neck long sleeve top and a pair of black jeans, together with a set of very wicked silver throwing knives and shuriken strapped into the holster he wore over his shoulders. His brother shared his love of imbuing steel with his power and letting it fly, while Valen delivered a nasty shock that way, sometimes enough to end the demon if they were weak and young. Diamond delivered a blast of ice, the equivalent of a sudden onset of frostbite. Valen had witnessed demons lose limbs to it in the blink of an eye. The slashes across his chest burned and he couldn't stifle the grimace this time. Shit. He gritted his teeth and tugged his black t-shirt up, his entire torso blazing as his muscles shifted. Fucking damn. He hissed through his clenched teeth as fresh pain rolled through him and gathered a clean section of the t-shirt into his right fist. It stung like a motherfucker as he dabbed at the wounds, using his ruined t-shirt to mop up the blood and reveal the slashes. More like grooves. They were pretty fucking deep. Escher needed his claws clipped. He scowled down at the wounds, trying to see whether they were healing yet and struggling to keep a leash on his mood. He couldn't hold them against his brother. Escher had only given him what he deserved for daring to bring Ava, a mortal, into his home on tonight of all nights. What happened to her? Diamond said again, softer this time, and jerked his chin towards Ava. Valen stopped prodding at the healing cuts on his chest and glanced down at her, found her staring up at him with that blank look in her eyes, and sighed as he smoothed his clean hand over her hair, hoping it would soothe her and bring her back to him. Uncle. He knew he didn't need to say any more than that when Diamond's face darkened and he folded his arms across his chest, causing his muscles to flex beneath his tight top. Still, he had expected his brother to blame him for upsetting Zeus, to make out that he had done something wrong. It seemed even Diamond had his limits when it came to what he would try to blame on him, and his uncle taking a mortal and hurting her had crossed that line. Why would he do that? Diamond studied her a cold edge to his pale blue eyes that Valen didn't hold against him. It was rare for Diamond to look any other way. Valen blamed his power for that, and the fact it had manifested when they had entered the mortal world, the same as Ares' fire, cutting them off from everyone in a way. What Valen now felt was the worst way possible. Not being able to touch others would certainly suck. Although the carrier that Ares had fallen for, Megan, could withstand their power. They still hadn't figured out how, but Valen suspected it had something to do with her ancestors and whoever her power to heal had come from. Maybe that god or goddess was a little closer in the family tree than they had thought, and she was nearer to hellspawn in status. Or higher. Was it possible she was a close descendant of a demigod? If she was, it would explain how she could withstand Ares' fire and Diamond's ice. He hates me. 
Valen said at last, pulling himself back to Diamond and pushing the little carrier out of his thoughts. It was more than that. Diamond shot back, not missing a beat. It was, but Valen was damned if he was going to tell his brother that he loved Ava, and that was the reason Zeus had taken her. There had been another reason, though, one that he was more than happy to mention. I was out at the gate, and the demons were coming to snatch her from my apartment. So Zeus beat them to it. Diamond looked as if he was having a hard time believing that. Valen shrugged. It's true. The old fart made a promise to Mum that he would protect whoever I... Uh, this was going badly. Normally, he could think of excuses at the drop of a hat and make his brothers believe them, and now he was on the verge of admitting the one thing he had just sworn he wouldn't. He grunted, He just made a promise, all right? Diamond's slow smile said he wanted to press the subject and get the truth out of him. Valen shot him a glare, daring him to do it, and felt his eyes shift, the gold growing brighter as his temper went from mellow to a need to lash out at Diamond and make him shut up. Diamond opened his mouth, snapped it closed. His eyes burned bright white and frost glittered over his gloved hands, and then he jerked to face the main door of the house. What's wrong? All thoughts of brawling with Diamond fled as Valen's senses rang alarm bells, and he was around the couches in a split second, heading towards him. Escher. Diamond disappeared. Fuck. Valen looked back over his shoulder at Ava, torn between following his brother and remaining with her. She stared at him, her blue eyes still distant and haunted. Fuck, he barked and growled, and she didn't even flinch. No thanks. Ares' deep voice rolled over him, laced with warmth for once, and a female giggled. He whipped around to face his older brother, and Karis appeared just beyond him, with Callistos landing a second later in a swirl of black smoke. Escher, Valen snapped, and all three of his brothers tossed him blank looks. Diamond, he felt something. Escher is in trouble. Remain here. Karis stepped, the haste of his teleport disturbing the black vapor trail that he left behind. Merrick appeared in the middle of it, looking around at everyone, and ran a hand over his tawny wild hair, a confused crinkle to his brow that echoed in his deep brown eyes. Did I miss something? Escher flipped his shit at me and left, and now Diamond has gone after him, but I think Escher is in trouble. Karis is gone too. Valen looked back at Ava and then at Merrick. The demons after Ava. Do you think they can teleport? Merrick shook his head, approached him, and held out a thick wedge of paper. It's all the information I have on their species. Valen stared at it and then his brothers. Torn between remaining in the mansion with them, now he knew Ava would be safe from Benares and Jin, and going after Escher with Karis and Diamond. This was all his fault. If he hadn't brought Ava here, Escher wouldn't have left and he would have been safe. He glanced at Ares, who shook his head slightly, a warning not to do it. Gods. It was his fault, though. He should be the one out there trying to locate Escher. What if something happened to him, something he couldn't heal? What if something happened to him that stirred up the past? He flicked a glance at the door, the need to go after Escher and bring him home safe, pounding in his blood. But another desire pushed back against it, keeping his feet planted to the tatami mats. Karis had ordered him to remain here, and disobeying him would land him in trouble and he was done being a pain in his big brother's arse. Who the fuck was he kidding? He focused to step. Karis landed hard in the middle of the room, shaking the wooden structure of the house, and Valen whirled to face him. He laid Escher down on the golden tatami mats, and the room collectively tensed. Karis looked down at his blood-stained hands, and then up at Diamond as he appeared. Blood covered him, too. Valen was by their sides in an instant, his brothers joining him to surround Escher. Escher's eyes snapped open and he snarled as he lurched off the floor, his back arching. His mouth opened on a roar of sheer fury as Karis pinned his shoulders, keeping him in place. Valen grabbed his ankles, fighting to keep him contained as he struggled, kicking at him and catching him hard a few times. Escher could kick him to death and he wouldn't let go. Calm down. Diamond whispered and kneeled above Escher's head. Escher didn't listen. His fight grew more frantic, his snarls more desperate as he tried to break free of Karis and Valen.
His boot connected hard with Valen's jaw as his leg shot up, and Valen grunted as he fell backwards, his head spinning from the blow. Merrick was on Escher's feet before he could kick out again, nodding to Valen. Valen nodded back to let him know he was fine. He glanced at Escher's face, and Callistos joined Karis in holding his shoulders down. None of them dared to speak, but it was clear all of them wanted to bring Escher back from the dark place that had consumed him. Escher, Diamond whispered, his voice low and soft, the only damn thing that could calm their brother now. Valen felt more than useless as he tried to help Escher, aware of just what little power he had in this situation. He glanced around his brothers and their somber faces said it all, relaying how he wasn't alone in his feelings. They all felt useless, unable to do anything but hold Escher down and wait for Diamond to reach him. Escher. Diamond ghosted his hands over Escher's head, and Escher snarled and snapped at him, his eyes shooting open. Shit, someone whispered, and Valen seconded that. Escher's eyes were verging on red. Escher! Diamond snapped, and Escher jerked to a halt, stared up at Diamond as he leaned over him so Escher could see him. Come back! For a heart-stopping moment, Valen thought that he might. Escher lurched up and snapped fangs in Diamond's face. The action sent blood pumping from the wound in his left side, and crimson seeped across the golden mats, spreading fast. He was losing too much blood. Valen stared at his face as he fought to keep Escher's legs contained with Merrick, willing his brother to respond, to shake the darkness and come back to the light. God's help them all if he didn't. It would be a massacre. Valen sensed Ava moving closer and held his right hand out behind him, warning her to keep back. Too late. Escher lashed out, his fight growing fiercer, and slashed sharp claws across Karis's arm, ripping through the sleeve of his long black coat. Karis huffed, grabbed Escher's wrist, and shoved it down hard, pinning it to the mat. It only made Escher fight harder, and his eyes shifted to his left as he bared his fangs. Ava. She gasped, and Valen felt her move back. Ares moved Megan away, too, taking her as far as the dining table. Escher growled low in a language of the underworld, causing the ground to shake beneath them and tearing pained gasps from Ava and Megan that only drew his focus to Ava even more. Mortal must die. They all must die. Vile bitch. Start with her. Make her pay. Tear her apart and feast on her screams. And show the others what will become of them. She will be my standard in this war. Valen flashed his own short fangs at his brother. Fucking try it. He couldn't hold it against Escher because the pain had pushed him into his memories, and now all mortals were threats to him and his family. But he wasn't going to stand by and let him say shit about hurting Ava. He glared at Diamond. About time you did something, don't you think? Escher kicked harder, catching him in his gut, and he grunted as his breath left him, twisted the bastard's leg, and tore a satisfying grunt of pain from him. Karis tossed a black look over his right shoulder at him. Like hell he was going to apologize for it. Escher was on a war path and his woman was the first target. Fucking Karis would have done the same thing if it had been a certain goddess in the room being threatened by Escher. Diamond growled, his eyes shone bright white, and remorse flickered across his face a second before it hardened in determination. He pressed his gloved palms against the sides of Escher's head. Escher roared, jacking up off the mats again, his skin paling as Diamond's ice spread glittering frost across his cheeks and his black hair. His lips turned blue and he slowed, still snarling but his fight was leaving him, his actions weaker as the cold sapped his strength. Enough, Karis barked, and Diamond yanked his hands away. Escher collapsed against the tatami mats, lying in a pool of red. Too still. Had Diamond overestimated how much Escher could take in his weakened state? Valen held his breath, staring at Escher and willing him to respond now, to give them all a sign that he would be all right, because they couldn't lose him. He couldn't lose another sibling. He lifted his head and looked at Callistos, keeping an eye on his younger brother as he stared at Escher, hope flooding his sky-blue eyes and his blonde hair hanging in long tangled threads around his shoulders and cheeks pulled from his ponytail by Escher's frantic struggling. Black warred against the blue, 
Callistos's struggle visible in his eyes as he fought for control. Valen risked taking one hand off Escher's left leg and pressed it to Cal's shoulder, squeezing it through his black T-shirt, needing to let his youngest brother know that Escher would be fine and they weren't going to lose him, not as they had lost Calindria. Cal sniffed and cleared his throat and nodded as he closed his eyes. Valen kept his hand on his shoulder, offering him the only comfort he could while they waited for Escher to respond. Come on, Diamond muttered, tension bracketing his mouth in deep lines as he stared down at Escher. He grabbed Escher's shoulders and shook him hard. Come back, you bastard! Escher gasped, his chest expanding rapidly to stretch his gray-blue shirt across it, and then sank back against the mats. Fucker. Valen whispered. Merrick shot him a look that said he seconded that one and sat back on his heels, his hand still clutching Escher's right leg and his strength visibly leaving him as he sagged. Karis followed suit, and Cal's trembling subsided beneath Valen's hand and he curled forwards, muttering curses aimed at Escher. Valen stared at Escher's left side. Blood still trickled from the wound. Something was wrong here. Escher should have been healing by now. Even with all the struggling, his body should have started to repair and seal the wound, stopping the bleeding. He pushed Escher's soaking shirt up and the dark gray t-shirt he wore beneath it. Cal gasped. Karis swore. It was that bad. The wound was nothing more than a two-inch puncture, a clean cut. It was the skin around it that had them all cursing and the air growing heavy again with the fear they still might lose Escher. Black surrounded the wound by at least another two inches in all directions, slowly turning into purple at the edges and transforming into tendrils that spread across Escher's body. They writhed and shifted like a living thing, growing as they all stared. Ares bit out, Wraith! A chill went through Valen. He tore Escher's shirt open and shoved his t-shirt up his chest, needing to see how far it had already spread. The tendrils snaked across his stomach, past his navel, and up his chest to his left nipple. Fuck, he snarled. Megan appeared between him and Callistos, pushing them away from Escher. Give me room. Sweetheart, Ares said, a note of caution in his deep voice, and she shot him down with a glare. I'm doing this. Just back off and give me room. Valen didn't know what to say. Ares had explained that healing them drained her and left her weak that she had come close to death once when trying to aid him. Valen admired the fuck out of her as he knelt beside her, watching her assessing the wound, knowing that she was about to risk her life to save Escher's. Ares moved around behind her, sank to his knees and placed his hands on her shoulders, rubbing them through her light black cotton jacket. She pulled her chestnut hair from her face and secured it with a black band, her fingers shaking as she struggled to tie it in a ponytail at the nape of her neck. She was afraid. Valen couldn't blame her. Using her power wasn't the only risk she was taking. She was taking a huge one just being close to Escher, when none of them knew when he would come around. If he woke with her near him, a mortal in his eyes, he was liable to kill her. Valen wouldn't let that happen. The grim look on Ares' face said he wouldn't either. Megan reached a trembling hand out and placed it on Escher's stomach just above the wound. When she added a second, below the wound and close to Escher's hip, Ares growled and she tensed. Sorry, he muttered against her hair and pressed a kiss to the back of her head. Knee-jerk reaction. Valen understood why. If it had been Ava touching one of his brothers in front of him, he would have lost his shit too. He looked over his right shoulder at her. She stood near the couches, her bottom against the back of one and had her right hand tucked against her chest. Concern filled her expression as she looked at the group. Her blue eyes shifted to meet his, and relief that she looked normal again now flowed through him, and straight out again as his worry for her was replaced by worry for Escher. Valen pulled his focus back to his brother. Megan closed her eyes and hung her head forwards. The room filled with an air of expectation as everyone stared at the violet tendrils waiting to see a change in them. Their writhing slowed, but they didn't stop spreading. Fight. Valen willed Escher to hear him, to do as he pleaded. Fight harder, because it was his soul on the line. A wraith's blade was deadly to all creatures, 
a method of slowly extracting a soul through an excruciating death. This was all his fault. A wraith wouldn't have been able to do this to Escher if Escher hadn't been preoccupied with calming himself, and he knew that was exactly what his brother had gone to do. He had driven his brother out by bringing Ava here and had placed him in grave danger. Do not blame yourself, Karis said, as if he had read Valen's mind. Maybe he had. Karis was a pain like that, always sticking his nose in where it wasn't wanted. He shrugged it off, but couldn't deny the relief that flooded him as Karis's comforting words sank in, and the tendrils spreading across Escher's body finally began to reverse, shrinking back towards the patch of black around the wound. Ares needed Megan's shoulders. You're doing great, sweetheart. She nodded and swallowed hard, sweat beating on her brow and her skin draining of color as she kept going. Healing Escher. Valen couldn't believe it. He had never seen her heal before, and while he had heard the stories from Diamond and Ares about the time she had healed them, part of him hadn't quite believed she possessed that talent. But it was true. He stared wide-eyed at her hands on Escher's side, and the black as it began to shrink towards the wound. When it was all gone, violet smoke rushed from the wound on a hiss and dissipated. Megan collapsed back against Ares, breathing hard and trembling. Ares wrapped his arms around her, tucking her against his broad body, and petted her, whispering sickly sweet things to her. Gods only knew how Escher was going to process what had just happened when he came around. He looked down at his brother. Escher owed a mortal, and he owed her with his life. That was a shitstorm brewing on the horizon if he had ever seen one. Karis carefully lifted Escher into his arms and walked towards the corridor on the right side of the room that led to Escher's bedroom. Diamond stood and didn't look at any of them, his eyes remaining locked on the dark crimson patch on the floor. I'll pay penitence in his stead. He stepped before Valen could stop him and take his place. It should have been him receiving punishment from Nemesis for Escher speaking the language of the underworld in the mortal realm, not Diamond. What had happened to Escher had been his fault. Megan moaned and he looked across at her. Is she okay? He said. The whole room stared at him, shock etched onto all their faces. Valen flipped them all off one by one. Fuck you all. They didn't have to make such a big deal about him being concerned about someone else. I'll be peachy again soon. Megan sounded a touch too bright. She sagged against Ares' chest. I could use about thirty years of sleep, though. Sweetheart, Ares murmured and stroked her hair. He looked as if he wanted to chastise her, but then he forced a tight smile. Thank you, baby. She nodded and snuggled closer to him, closing her eyes and sighing out her breath. Ares scooped her up into his arms and stood. Take care of her, old man, Merrick said as he came to his feet. We have things here. Ares nodded and stepped. Callisto muttered something, pulled a sour face, and shoved onto his feet, issuing a glare to all of them. Damn gate is calling. You say anything interesting while I'm gone and I'll murder you all in your sleep. He disappeared, revealing Karis as he emerged from the corridor, his too handsome face set in a dark expression and his green eyes verging on glowing. He was on the warpath. Valen pitied whoever was in the firing line of his oldest brother. Tell me everything, Karis barked, his green eyes glowing now as they narrowed on him. Starting with what the fuck you were doing on Mount Olympus. Valen's stomach dropped. He swallowed hard. He was the poor bastard in the firing line. Chapter 28 Ava's head was killing her, which was making taking in everything that was happening all the more difficult. She stared at the dark patch of blood on the floor, soaking into the straw mats. Something had happened, something awful, and she had come around in the middle of it, roused by a sound that had made her think of monsters, of Benares. The relief she had felt on realizing he didn't have her had fled the second she had discovered she was in a strange place. But it had come back a little when she had stood and spotted Valen, fighting to save one of his brothers. Valen stood a short distance away, scrubbing a hand over his face. He was a mess, 
There were long rips in his black T-shirt that exposed angry wounds beneath, cuts that looked as if someone had slashed at him with claws and blood-stained skin. She wanted to know what had happened to him, felt a deep and consuming need to go to him and tend to his wounds, but remained silent and still, frozen in place by the way his brother had looked at her, red eyes shining with a hunger for her blood. Whatever he had said in her direction, it had pulled a fierce reaction from Valen, leaving her in no doubt he had intended to hurt her. He had done enough damage with that language he had spoken. It had felt as if her eardrums were going to burst, every word he had spoken sending searing pain piercing her skull. Valen stared down Karis as he stopped in the middle of the room, his golden eyes haunted but gaining a hard edge as he steeled himself for his brother's wrath. Merrick, the one with tawny wavy hair and sun-kissed skin and a love of dark linen clothing and sandals, tensed and backed off a step, giving Karis and Valen more room, as if he feared they might suddenly explode and catch him in the crossfire. She tensed as a flash of another man matching his description shot across her mind and sank against the couch behind her. Ava. Valen was by her side before she could open her eyes and tell him that she was fine. She looked up into his golden eyes and saw different ones looking back at her, and a voice echoed in her mind. I need to keep my promise. Promise, she whispered, her eyebrows dropping low as she tried to understand. What promise? Valen's hands came to rest on her bare shoulders, and he gently squeezed them. Nothing for you to worry about. She shook her head, kept struggling to remember what had happened, even though she knew he wanted her to stop and let it go. If he wanted that, then something had happened, something he thought would frighten her. She looked down at her chest, touched the spot over her heart as it throbbed. It was hot beneath her fingertips. Valen captured her hand and held it in both of his. Valen, Kara snapped. His head whipped around to face his brother and he snarled. Give me a minute, will you? No, I want answers. Kara stripped his black coat off, folded it in half, and placed it on the back of the couch at the other end of it to Ava. It was strange that he always dressed so formally when all of the brothers were more casual. Didn't he fight much? His crisp black tailored shirt and slacks and neat black shoes were far too impractical. She looked from him to Valen, whose tight black t-shirt and combat trousers and heavy boots were better attire for fighting. Even Merrick's loose black linen trousers and dark brown shirt were more suitable. She wouldn't even begrudge him the sandals. She had that weird feeling again, that sensation that he looked like someone else. Valen growled, grabbed her arm, and pulled her to her left, blocking her view of Merrick. What had the big guy Ares said after he had positively growled at Megan for touching Escher? It was a knee-jerk reaction. Had Valens been one, too? He didn't like her looking at his brothers. He just reminds me of someone. Me? Merrick jabbed a finger at himself, and his rich brown eyes turned thoughtful. He rolled his broad shoulders. Father always says I look like our uncle. Your uncle? She looked to Valen for the answer to that one. He didn't look as if he would give it to her. Let me take you somewhere where you can rest. That sounded a lot like he was avoiding saying it for some reason, which only made her want to know even more. Coupled with the fact he obviously didn't want to discuss things with Karis in front of her, and not because she was technically working for their enemy, because Karis certainly didn't seem to mind talking about things around her now. Suspicion formed as a seed in her mind and took root growing as she stared at Valen. He tried to tug her away from the couch. She snatched her arm from his grip. It's fine. It's okay. She raised her hands and cupped his cheeks, holding his gaze. I'm stronger than you think, Valen. I'm not made of glass. He sighed. That isn't the problem. I know you're strong. So what is it, then? The way he looked at her gave her the answer. He was the one afraid. He feared that whatever she might hear in his conversation with his brothers would drive her away. Not likely. She'd had her outburst, her moment of crazy, and she was over it now. Valen, his brothers, her clients, and the man who had taken her from Valen's apartment were all the stuff of dreams and nightmares, of fantasy. But she had finally found her feet, and the ground beneath them was stable again.
She'd had the time she needed to take it all in and process it. And deep inside, she knew that it had happened while she had been asleep, unconscious. She remembered the man, and then there had been a bright warm light, and she had heard two voices echoing through it. She'd caught snippets of their conversation, fragments that she couldn't remember now, but the warmth they had stirred and the comfort they had given her lingered like the light inside her, leaving no room for fear. I'm not going anywhere, she whispered, wishing they were alone and he was the only one to hear those words, because they were private, meant only for him, along with the rest of what she had to say. The safest place is with you, right? His golden eyes lit up, the warmth in them a strange thing to see, because all the time she had seen him around his brothers, he had kept a lid on his feelings, concealing them from his family. So sweet, Merrick muttered. That light vanished, darkness replaced it, the valen she was used to. He glared over his shoulder. Fuck off. Ava stepped up beside him and took hold of his hand. His eyes instantly leaped back to hers, a flicker of shock in them. If he looked shocked now, he was going to look blown away in a second, because she had just remembered something. So why did Zeus take me to Mount Olympus to keep a promise? His golden eyes shot wide and he blinked at her. Karis and Merrick stared at her, stunned expressions making her smile. I think snippets of it are coming back. I remember you there, like a shadow in the light. I think you wanted to fight. We have a history. His free hand lifted, fingers absently grazing the scar on the left side of his face as he stared down at her. Not a good history. She frowned and he shook his head. The way his two brothers looked at his back with pity in their eyes spoke to her. She knew Valen now, had finally completed the picture of him. He had a temper, a very short fuse, and his power was seductive because it was so strong and violent, playing on that temper and teasing it to the fore. She could imagine that not even the alpha god of their world would be immune to his wrath if he had pissed off Valen. I remember hearing your sister mentioned. Karis took a sudden step forwards. Calindria? Valen's golden eyes grew dark and haunted, and he nodded. I'm glad Cal had to leave, because I have a few things to say that I don't think he could bear hearing, and a theory that my gut says is the answer to the question that has plagued us for centuries. Go on, Karis said, but Valen didn't continue immediately. He stood next to her in silence, and she could see the struggle in his eyes and feel it in the way his hand trembled in hers. She remembered how his shadow had flickered in that bright world, red at times and black at others. She remembered his pain. She squeezed his hand. He clutched it tighter, squared his shoulders, and looked at Merrick and Karis. The wraith we keep encountering was involved then. We all know that they can capture and store a soul and that hers is missing. His voice shook, revealing his emotions to her, feelings that crossed his brother's faces too as they paled. Wraiths weren't banished from the underworld until only a couple of centuries ago, after they had pissed off Dad. It makes sense that if it was a wraith who did it, it was this bastard. And maybe that means we can find Calindria's soul and free it. Her soul? His sister had lost her soul? Ares had mentioned a wraith earlier, when they had been trying to help Escher. This wraith could kill Valen and his brothers. But they were gods. A foolish part of her had thought that meant they were immortal, unable to die, even when Valen had mentioned he had lost his sister. Valen squeezed her hand now and glanced at her. No wraith is getting the jump on me. She nodded, wanting to believe that. Do not pin your hopes on being able to find it, Valen, Karis said, his fine black eyebrows pinching together above his clear green eyes and his lips flattening, the corners of them turning downwards as he started to pace. It has been a long time. It might not be possible to find it now. Or it might be... Merrick and Valen fell silent and grim, as pensive as Karis. She didn't want to ask what it might be because the way Karis had cut himself off said that whatever it was, it wouldn't be good.
Was it possible something might have happened to Calindria's soul to change it? Could a soul turn evil? Could she become a demon? I cannot deny the thought that the wraith might be involved in her death hadn't crossed my mind. Even played on it, since Ares and Diamond witnessed him killing Amori. Karis rubbed his right thumb across his lower lip, his left arm wrapped around his waist and supporting his right elbow. Merrick stepped forwards. Could he be the leader? Whether he is the leader or not, Valen said, and Karis and Merrick looked at him. We have to find him and capture him, and not only because it might end the plot to destroy the gates and save our world and this one. We have to try to save Calindria's soul. Resolve filled Karis's eyes, and he nodded. I will hit our database and see what I can find on wraiths. Merrick had barely finished his sentence before he disappeared. The young blonde brother appeared next to Karis and casually brushed the black ribbons of smoke from his bare arms. If it wasn't for the blue eyes and the slight difference in years, she would have hazarded a guess that he and Valen were twins. They even had the same taste in clothing, dressed exactly alike. Miss me? He beamed at Karis and Valen, his blue eyes bright with his smile. There was a streak of something black across his cheek. Karis curled a lip at it took a handkerchief from his trouser pocket and wiped it away, more like a doting father than an older brother. Damn demons, always bleeding all over me. Callisto scrubbed at the spot with his hand and gave everyone an expectant look. So, what did I miss? Karis's expression shifted towards somber as he pocketed the handkerchief. Valen remained silent so long she wondered if he would ever speak again. It seemed neither brother knew what to say which was strange. She opened her mouth. Valen shot her a glare, the one he always used when telling her to remain quiet. We think the wraith might be the leader. Valen left it at that and she frowned at him. His golden eyes slid down to hers and he shook his head, just enough for her to notice. Why hadn't he mentioned his theory about their sister, too? Ava had wanted to know more about her, but it was obvious that conversation wasn't going to continue now that Callistos had returned. He looked between his brothers, a blank edge to his expression as he waited for them to tell him more. She felt sorry for him. Why were they keeping things from him? We need to deal with your demons first, Karis said, dragging her focus back to him, and she shivered as she thought about returning to Rome where Benares and Jin awaited her. Her three days were almost up and if the snippets of her time in the weird warm light that were coming back were right, Jen had already tried to take her to Benares to lure Valen into a trap and over to his side. She wanted this over now, so she could be in Rome again without fearing for her life, without looking over her shoulder every second of the day, expecting that monster to come after her. She wanted him dead. His bitch sister, too. Do you have a plan? Karis said to Valen. Ava stepped forwards and all eyes came to land on her. I have one. Chapter 29 Fuck no, Valen barked and ignored the pointed looks Callistos and Karis gave him and the way Ava planted her hands on her hips and glared in his direction. Not going to happen. What she had proposed was madness. He couldn't allow her to do it not only because it placed her in danger, but because every fiber of his being, every drop of his soul, screamed that he wouldn't be able to protect her. He would fail. Ava huffed, the sharp action causing her chest to rise in a way that was too damn distracting in the green halter top she wore. The wicked glimmer in her eyes said that she knew it, too, that she was using her best weapons against him. He flashed his teeth at her. Not gonna happen. Deal with it. Listen to reason, Karis started, but fell silent when Valen shot him down with a glare. His big brother held his hands up at his sides and sighed. I know it goes against your blood, but if the demons had planned to take her and use her as bait for you, then it stands to reason they will try again. And if they kill her, they won't kill me. Ava didn't sound sure. In fact, she sounded almost convinced that they would, and it frightened her. No, she was convinced. She had been convinced Benares wanted her dead for a while now, which made it even harder to go along with her plan. 
stupid plan that it was. Valen, this might be our only way of getting to them. Karis again, trying to play the voice of reason. Callistos mercifully held his tongue, the look on his face saying he wasn't going to risk his neck by courting the darker side of Valen's temper, with suggestions that he just let Ava place herself at risk, as if she meant nothing to him, when she meant everything. I can't, Valen rasped and dragged his hands over his hair, clawing it back and digging his fingers into it. You know that. The soft look in Ava's blue eyes said that she did know. She knew how difficult this was for him, and she knew the risks, and she was still willing to do it. For him, and for herself, too. How else are you going to get close to them? Benares is fast. I'll just have to be faster, he said, and she rolled her eyes, earning a growl from him. I can outstrip that bastard, don't worry. And all the men he employs? She scowled at him. There are at least two dozen of them, and I get the feeling they aren't human. If their boss is a demon, it stands to reason they are too, Karis said, and Valen wanted to punch him. Luckily for his brother, he was making sense, and so was Ava, and Valen wasn't in the mood to lash out at people for no real reason tonight. He looked down into Ava's eyes, weighing his options, and finding both of them sucked. If he tried to go in alone, he would be facing at least two dozen demons, their strength and age unknown factors that might lead him to his doom. He could be overpowered by less than ten strong demons if they were coordinated and of the right species. What sort of demons would follow an incubus? He didn't know. But the only other option was to let Ava do things her way. Jin would take her from his apartment, and he would track them to the villa. Once enough time had passed, he would walk right through the front door, a welcomed guest. Although he would probably end up taking out a few of the demons along the way, and not only for show. The thought of Ava being taken by Benares, a captive of a monster she feared, and held at his mercy, had him wanting demon blood on his hands already, and he was only thinking about it. If he did let Benares take her, then he would want more than demon blood on his hands. He would want a war. He would want to tear apart the villa with his lightning until every damned demon in it was dead. He stared down at Ava. Gods, he couldn't do it. Zeus had taken her to protect her, because the Mori must have foreseen something bad happening to her. Valen couldn't stand by and let that happen, just so she could lure the demons into a trap for him. Tell me where they live, and we'll launch an all-out assault on the place, Valen said his voice a deep snarl that shocked even him, his darker side roused by the need to protect her at whatever cost. She shook her head. They'll be expecting that from you. It's your M.O. I wouldn't be surprised if Benares has increased security since I was last there. They have guns, Valen. If a knife can hurt your brother, I'm fairly certain bullets can hurt you. That wasn't going to stop him. I'll deal with them, he snapped. She folded her arms across her chest and her lips compressed in a mulish line. It only takes one of them to raise the alarm and then Benares and Jin are gone. Is that what you want? He glared at her. She does have a point. Valen shot Karis another warning look, but this time he didn't back down. His brother narrowed green eyes on him that glowed in their centers, shining brightly around his pupils. He was testing Karis's patience, but he couldn't stop himself not when the thought of putting Ava at risk was screwing with his head, making him want to step right now and obliterate the mansion so she didn't have to do something crazy. Tell me where the mansion is. No, she barked and shook her head, making her black hair sway across her jaw. I will not, because you aren't listening to reason. You'll go off and, and get yourself... Valen's anger flatlined. His shoulders sagged as it all drained out of him, as if she had pulled a plug rather than simply cut herself off, stopping herself from saying something that she didn't want to voice, something that told him everything. She really did care about him, and he was being a massive dick again. He only wanted to protect her, but he hadn't considered that he would end up hurting her by trying to do it. She wanted to help, because she was afraid that if she didn't, he would get himself killed. Hey, he murmured, and she refused to look at him, kept her eyes fixed on his chest. 
He closed the distance between them, smoothed his right hand along her jaw, and brushed his thumb over her cheek. It isn't going to happen. She still wouldn't look at him. Karis's gaze bore a deep hole in the side of his skull. Fine. I won't do it, he muttered, and she lifted her eyes to his. And gods, the relief in them hit him hard in the chest, punching a hole through it to his heart. But answer this. What's to say Benares isn't already on to us? All he knows is that I wasn't at your apartment when he sent Jin there. I'll check in and say things are going according to plan, and I'll be ready to hand you over soon. He's bound to send Jin to take me again if I say that I'm just waiting at your place while you deal with some business at something you called a gate. Ava looked sure as shit that her plan was flawless. Valen wasn't convinced, but he didn't say it, didn't even let her see it in his eyes. If things went south, he would find a way to save her. He had told her not to expect him to be a hero, but it seemed he couldn't help himself where she was concerned. It would always be this way. The second she got into trouble, he would be there like some cliché white knight to rescue her arse. You'll feel the ward's trigger, and then you'll come after me, and they'll welcome you with open arms. When I go to them alone, he said what she wouldn't. No. Karis snapped, a powerful command behind that word that made the air around Valen tremble. Valen looked across at his older brother, shock rippling through him as he registered what had just happened. Karis hated the idea of him walking into danger alone, and he hated it so much he had almost lost his temper. Almost. Valen had seen the things that happened when Karis lost his temper, and that widespread destruction was half of the reason he kept a lid on it. The other half, Valen didn't know, but something held back his negative emotions and kept him mellow. So you'll hang around at a distance as backup. Valen grinned at him, aiming for his usual charming and cocky self to soothe his brother's temper, because Escher would be pissed if he came around to find Karis had leveled half of Tokyo. We need one of them alive. Karis curled his hands into fists and clenched them and the vivid green gold in his eyes faded to emerald as he got his emotions back under control. Do you think you can manage that? He wasn't sure. Just the thought of them hurting Ava had him close to the edge of losing control already. He couldn't guarantee he would be able to keep his head when he knew they had her. I will have Merrick come too. We will track you and wait in the shadows for a sign you need help. Karis took his coat from the back of the couch and slipped it back on, the hem swaying around his ankles before it settled. There was a lot Valen wanted to say in response to that. He didn't need help. It was dangerous for Karis to use his command over the shadows to conceal him and Merrick, and this was his moment, and he would kill his brother if he stole his gig as White Knight. In the end, he settled for saying, Thanks. Karis nodded and disappeared. Callistos blew out his breath on a low whistle. You really know how to push his buttons, brother. Before Valen could respond, Callistos stepped. Little bastard. But he was right. Karis's temper had flared. Only a little, but it had happened, and he couldn't remember the last time their fearless leader had been affected by anything that happened to them, or anything they had proposed to do. Escher must have shaken him deeper than everyone had thought. Or he was finally reaching his limit, and everything he had bottled up during his time in the mortal world, every negative emotion he had contained, had him close to bursting. Valen didn't want to be around when that happened. He fished his phone from his pocket, the handful of small innocuous charms that hung from it rattling, and sorted through them, searching for the right one. What are you doing? Ava moved closer, peering at his phone. Sending a message. She frowned. You do that with the screen, you know. He smiled. Not this sort of message. There are no phones on Mount Olympus. He pressed the simple sword and shield metal charm against his palm and closed his fingers over it. It was warm. Metal of the gods. Valen closed his eyes and sent the message. He just hoped her brother didn't pick it up. He stuffed his phone back in his pocket shutting out the voice at the back of his mind that whispered about how much he hated people meddling in his affairs, and now he was doing it to others. He shrugged that off. It wasn't meddling. 
He liked to think of it as saving the world. He held his right hand out to Ava. Walk with me. Chapter 30 Valen didn't realize how much he needed to be alone with Ava, how fiercely he wanted to spend every last possible second with her, before they kicked their plan into action, until she placed her hand into his. He clutched it tightly. She frowned down at their joined hands, and then up into his eyes, and placed her other hand over his. I'll be fine, she said, and he nodded. But he didn't believe it. He couldn't when every possible scenario was running through his head, weighing down his heart. Come on. She tugged on his hand, leading him towards sliding wood-framed white panels that had been pushed back to reveal the covered wooden walkway that ran around the three sides of the building facing onto the courtyard. She looked back at him, a smile in her eyes. You never told me you knew a place like this. Why did she look so fascinated? He smiled when it hit him. The nightingale floors in her apartment. We don't have any. He shrugged when she looked disappointed. We don't really need them. The wards around the mansion stop anyone from entering. You keep mentioning wards. Are they like a barrier? He nodded and took the lead as they stepped out onto the covered walkway. He tugged her to the right and followed it around a bend and along that wing of the ancient house. We all lived here once, so the barriers are strongest, reinforced by our father. He stopped at the two decorated paper panels that formed a door to the room at the end of the wing, over the koi pond. As the world developed, we all ended up leaving this place to be closer to our gates. Only Escher stays here now, but Diamond stops over from time to time. They seem close, she whispered, and he nodded again. They share one hell of a bond. He released her hand and carefully slid one of the doors back, revealing the room on the other side. A single square paper lantern illuminated the almost naked space, situated on the tatami mat floor a few feet from his brother's head. Valen stepped into the room and kneeled beside Escher on the floor. He was still too pale, his breathing labored as he fought to heal the wound. Valen drew the thick blue blanket down to reveal Escher's bare chest and folded it over his hips. He leaned over and studied the wound, sank back on his heels as he saw it was healing, and let out the breath he had been holding. Escher would be fine, physically anyway. He would have to wait to see what sort of mental shape his brother was in when he came around. He closed his eyes, drew in another deep breath, and took hold of Escher's hand, issuing a silent apology to his brother. Will he be okay? Ava whispered, and he let go of Escher's hand, covered him again, and rose back onto his feet. She stood in the doorway, partially hidden behind it, and he couldn't blame her for keeping her distance after the way Escher had reacted to her. Valen nodded, stepped out of the room, and gently closed the sliding door. He'll be fine. Up and around in no time, and probably tearing us all new ones for walking around the house in our shoes. He took her hand again and led her to the broad stone step and down into the courtyard, following the path that snaked through the gravel and the manicured small trees. She stopped, forcing him to stop with her, and he glanced over his shoulder at her. Will you? she said, and when he frowned at her, added, Be fine? Her blue gaze dropped to his chest. He smiled to alleviate her worry and fingered the slashes in his black t-shirt. Escher lost his temper when I arrived with you, but I'll be fine. The cuts are healing and they'll be gone in a few hours. Incredible, she murmured and lifted her eyes to meet his. You healed quickly from the wounds you picked up in the bar fight in Rome, too. He shrugged it off. Perk of being a god. A hollow clacking sound echoed around the peaceful garden, sending a jolt down his spine, and he glared at the water feature responsible for that harrowing noise. He hated the damn thing. It was nothing more than a simple construction involving a bamboo pipe and a water course that fed it, filling it up until it tipped on its axis and spilled its contents into the square pool of the thick stone disc on the gravel near the pond but he hated it. He hated the sharp wooden sound it made when the empty bamboo pipe swung back the other way, the sealed base striking the stone. It royally pissed him off whenever he stayed at the mansion, 
keeping him awake for hours. Escher loved the damn thing, though. Valen stalked over to it, scooped up a handful of the spring water from the pool and used it to wash his chest. Shuddered. Fuck, it was freezing. He scrubbed the blood from his body as quickly as he could, and then stilled as moonlight shone down on him, allowing him to inspect the wounds. They were healing well now. A few more hours and they would be little more than pink in skin. Ava studied him, so fiercely he could almost feel her concern. He shot her a smile over his shoulder. All good. They'll be gone before you know it. He held his hand out to her. She slipped hers back into it and he led her along the path past the water feature to the small bridge that arched over the pond. Ava slowed at the apex of the curved red wooden bridge and he looked back at her. Stopped. Sweet gods, she was beautiful. Moonlight bathed her skin, making it clear and milky white, and transformed her eyes, so they shone almost like his did at times, hers bright blue in the strong light. She tensed and he swore a blush of color rose onto her cheeks as she looked away, but then her eyes met his again, and the determined look in them almost swept his legs out from under him. She hemmed him in against the arched wooden balustrade of the bridge, lifted her hand and touched his cheek. His left one. Does this have something to do with your sister? He wanted to shut her out, bring up the barriers and not let her see that part of him, but he was tired of always hiding it from her. She would find out one day and he would rather that day was now, when he was only falling in love with her. In order to spare himself greater pain in the future, he had to put himself through the agony of telling her now. It wasn't my finest moment. He tipped his head back, looking up at the moon in the clear sky. Stars twinkled around it, faint but visible, struggling as their backdrop lightened. It would be dawn soon. He planted his hands on the balustrade and sighed. When she died, I went off the rails. And I killed the goddesses who had sworn to protect her. He lowered his eyes back to Ava's. I butchered the Mwari. Her eyes widened. The fates? He nodded and turned his cheek to her, watched the koi sleeping in the pond, peaceful and unaware of his pain. Lucky bastards. I went after Zeus, blaming him for not stopping what happened to Calindria. Gods, I burned with that need for vengeance and it consumed me. I was so convinced I could both avenge her and get her back at the same time. I wanted to defeat Zeus so he would bring my sister back. He closed his eyes and sighed again. Even back then, part of me knew it wasn't possible. That Zeus could do fuck all for her without her soul. What happened? Ava pressed closer to him, her warmth chasing some of the cold away and he draped his arms around her bare shoulders and pulled her closer still, kneading the light weight of her body against his and the scent of her soothing him. Zeus defeated me and gave life back to the Moari, and he would have killed me if my mother hadn't shown up and pleaded for my life. He gazed down at Ava and stroked her short hair behind her right ear. Instead of killing me, Zeus banished me from Mount Olympus and decreed that I would no longer know the gods of that realm, and they would no longer know me. He took his favor from me. He brushed his fingers across his scar. Her eyes fell there. Favor? He nodded. Each of us were blessed with the favor of a god or goddess when we were born. My brothers still bear the marks of those who favor them. You've probably noticed the writing on the underside of Cal's forearm and that stupid black heart below Karis's eye. I didn't realize it was a heart. Her eyebrows rose. Aphrodite thought it would be funny, apparently. Ava smiled. It does make him look a little... girly? Valen had always thought so, and the twinkle in Ava's blue eyes said she thought it too. Her expression turned serious, and she pressed her palm to his scar. What was yours like? She just had to ask, didn't she? He hated thinking about it. It was a constant reminder of what he had done and that his sister was gone. But there was hope now, 
a chance that they might be able to save her if her soul hadn't become corrupted. He cleared his throat. Like purple lightning. It was beautiful. I used to stare at it so much as a kid, convinced I would be as strong as my uncle one day because he had given me his favor. And in the end, I was weak. I let my power control me, let my anger consume me. And I still keep doing it. She swept her fingers across the distorted skin of his scar, her touch tender and gentle, and a soft light entered her eyes. Don't look at me that way. He pushed her hand away. I don't need your pity. It isn't pity, Stronzo, she whispered and tiptoed, and he stilled as her lips pressed against his. Gods, her kiss was so soft and light, so tender it overwhelmed him, and he wasn't sure what to do, didn't know how to behave, because no one had ever kissed him like this. He was used to roughness, to passion pushed to its very limit, consumed by desire and driven by need. If she had kissed him hard, bitten his lip and given him pain, playing as rough as they had before, he would have been able to handle it. But he couldn't handle this. It was too new, too powerful. He had thought that the way they had been together the last two times had been everything he craved, everything he needed. How could he have been so wrong? How could she undo him so thoroughly with nothing more than a light brush of her lips across his? He told himself to move, to do something before she thought he really was an idiot, but he couldn't convince his body to obey him. Her kiss destroyed him, tore down his strength and made him weak, but it built him back up, too, piecing him together in a new way, one that felt stronger, because this kiss was meant to tell him something. Her feelings. He had waited so long for someone to love, and someone to love him, that he hadn't thought it possible, had become convinced that Zeus's curse had been real. Now he could see how blind he had been. All that time, he had been waiting for her. He hadn't wanted to get involved with the females in the underworld in any lasting way, because they hadn't been the one. They hadn't been Ava. Her kiss grew uncertain, spurring him into action, and he took the leap, returning it as softly as he could as everything overwhelmed him, hoping she would know that he felt the same way, that he loved her. He drew her against him and kissed her softly losing himself in it as it warmed him right down to the marrow of his bones, and filled him with a lightness that carried away all his doubts and fears, leaving only Ava and this moment. Her hands came down against his chest, and he groaned against her lips, his mind leaping forwards. She whispered against his lips, So if you used to live here, does that mean you have... He cut her off by teleporting her into the room she wanted to see. She pressed harder against him, but her kiss remained light, gentle, and teasing. He moaned and gathered her closer still, but his little assassin resisted, pushing him back and breaking her lips away from his. She glanced around the room. Other than two wide sets of drawers against one of the walls and a low wooden table that had been pushed back against the opposite wall, it was empty. Escher had kept the bed down, though. Valen didn't miss the unforgiving hardness of Japanese sleeping arrangements. Not even the thick blanket that acted as the mattress beneath the duvet was enough to stop him waking with an aching back in the morning whenever he slept over. Still, he didn't intend to do much sleeping. He was going to make love with Ava. Gods, that shouldn't terrify him as much as it did. Ava seemed to sense it, because she flashed him a wicked smile and pressed back against him, and her mouth claimed his again a little rougher than before. He groaned and pinned her against his body as he lost himself in the kiss, stroking his tongue along hers and teasing her with it. She moaned and wrapped her arms around his neck and leaped. Her legs snaked around his waist and he grabbed her backside, holding her in position, her weight nothing in his hands. He supposed she was right and making love was just a matter of the feelings that went into it, the emotions they both felt, it didn't have to be gentle all the time, as long as it was slow. Which was good, because the way she nibbled his lower lip pushed him way past being gentle with her. He growled and paid her back, nipping her plump lower lip between his teeth.
tearing a quiet moan from her as she trembled in his arms. Wicked little assassin. He dropped to his knees and lowered her onto the bedding, covering her body with his as he continued his assault, alternating between kissing her softly and being rough with her lip. She mewled beneath him, her hands coming down on his shoulders and fisting his t-shirt. More, she breathed against his lips, and he groaned and surrendered to that command, bringing his body down into contact with hers. He ground against her, driving his hard cock between her thighs, but rather than giving him the pleasure he needed, it only frustrated him. He needed her naked, bared for him. He kissed down her chest, over the swells of her breasts, and savored the way her heart beat frantically against his lips. Sweet Ava. She arched as he tugged aside the right cup of her green halter top, pulling her bra with it, exposing her nipple. It tightened in the cool air, calling to him, and his cock ached and throbbed in response, driving him into obeying that call. He groaned and lowered his lips, wrapped them around the sweet bud and suckled it. Ava moaned and writhed beneath him, tangled one hand in his hair and clutched him to her. Delicious. He would never get enough of how she reacted to him. He shoved at the other side of her top, freeing her breast, and toyed with the tight bead as he suckled her other one. She jerked and moaned as he tweaked it, squeezed it between his fingers and plucked at it. Valen, she breathed, voice low with need. Gods, he would never get enough of that either. Hearing how much pleasure he gave to her almost undid him. He growled and released her nipple and shifted across to latch onto the other one. She arched against him, pressing her breast into his mouth, and he hungrily devoured it as he skimmed his hand down her side. She giggled as he traced his fingers over her bare flesh beneath the hem of her top and then moaned again as he found the fly and began working on it. He needed her naked, bared to him. He undid the button and lowered the zipper and pushed his hand inside a groan escaping him as he found her moist center, so warm, wet, aching for him as he ached for her. He sucked hard on her nipple, tugging it as he pulled back, and she shuddered on a moan as he let it go and loomed over her. Her eyes opened, dark with need that echoed inside him. But need wasn't the only feeling shining in them. There was acceptance there, too, and a hell of a lot of love. That shot him past sweet, straight into wicked, filling him with a fierce hunger that demanded he sate it, a need to be one with her again, buried deep in her and claiming her as his own. He growled and that hunger in her eyes only grew more intense, beckoning him. She moaned as he yanked her jeans down to her ankles, taking her knickers with them, and didn't resist as he removed her trainers and then them, tossing them to one side. His t-shirt followed it, and he rolled onto his backside and kicked at his own boots. He needed to feel her skin on skin with him again, needed to claim her. It seemed she was on the same wavelength, because she yanked her top off and tossed it aside to join the rest of her clothes, and he could only stare at her. His fingers paused against his fly. Ava grinned wickedly, shifted onto all fours, and crawled over to him. He scowled at her. I'm meant to be making love with you. A blush stained her cheeks. This is making love. It was? He stared at her, unsure about that. Making love was meant to be slow at the very least, and the look in her eyes said that she was proposing something markedly different from that. She crushed his ability to think by running her hands over his thighs and up to his hips, and he sat there staring at her like an idiot, on fire with a need that consumed him a need she seemed all too happy to fulfill. She pressed her hands against his bare chest and gently pushed him back, and he hit the mats but didn't feel it as she kissed down his chest, lavishing the healing wounds with attention. Gods, that felt good. Wonderful, in fact. Another first for him. He had never had a female fuss over him like this. She swirled her tongue around his left nipple, he grunted as she bit it, sending hot tingles racing across his torso, and then melted into the floor as she continued downwards, trailing her lips over his stomach. She moaned low in her throat, a murmur of appreciation that stoked his male pride, rubbing it the right way. Her hands reached his trousers, and he waited as she opened his fly, holding his breath as his hard length throbbed with need, 
aching to feel her hot little hands on it. Cool air washed over his cock. Warmth followed it, slick and moist, driving him out of his mind. He groaned and tipped his head back into the mats, his entire body going rigid as she licked down his length and back up again, and took it in her hand. He grunted as she fisted it hard, a few rough pumps that had his knees shaking, and then released him and took him into her mouth. Sweet gods, the feel of her mouth on him, her warmth surrounding him as she sucked him, slowly taking him as deep as she could go, unraveled him. He lay at her mercy, panting hard as feelings collided within him, swirled together and flooded him so fiercely he feared he might drown in them. Gods, he hadn't lied that first night, when he had told her he could die right that moment and he wouldn't care. That same feeling swept over him now, the bliss of her touch so intense that only it mattered. He shuddered as she stroked a hand over his balls and then grunted as she tugged them, rolled them and found a new way to drive him out of his mind. Too much. He fisted her hair and pulled her away from him, dragged her up for a kiss that he had hoped would give him time to get himself back under control. His little assassin had other plans. She rubbed her body against his and let her legs fall away from him so she was straddling him, issuing a startling reminder of just where they touched. He groaned and grabbed her bottom, trying to force her into contact with his cock. She denied him, rolling off him on a giggle. Valen growled, rolled onto his side and caught her around the waist. He dragged her back to him, plastering his front against her back. She moaned and wriggled in his arms, her protest just a little too weak to be real. She liked this. Wicked little assassin. He caught her throat with his left hand and kissed the back of her neck as he lay on his side with her, trailing his right hand over her curves. She moaned again, lower and softer now, revealing her need to him. She stilled as he lifted her right thigh and slid down her body, and sighed as he fed his cock into her slowly, easing it as deep as it could go, until he met with resistance. Ava arched her back, taking him deeper still and he groaned against the back of her neck and grasped her right thigh, holding it over his legs. Valen, she moaned, a soft plea. He shifted his left hand up to her face, twisted her head towards him and kissed her as he pulled out of her, swallowing her moan as he made her feel every inch of him and what she did to him, what only she did to him. She moaned again as he drove back in, and he tried to keep the pace slow and steady managed it for a few strokes, before the feel of her and the way she responded to him hijacked control of his body. He kissed her harder as he plunged deeper, more forceful strokes as the need to claim her took over. She moaned with each one, arched and pressed back against him, encouraging him, as if he needed it. He tightened his grip on her throat and her thigh and drove deeper, hard thrusts that had her groaning sweetly whispering pleas for more that intoxicated him. She reached a hand down and he grunted as she fondled his balls whenever they came into reach, tugging on them and then stroking her fingers over his shaft as he withdrew. Sweet gods. He broke away from her lips and pressed his mouth against the back of her neck as he plunged into her, harder now, drinking down her moans and how she was touching him as he took her, lighting up all of his senses until he couldn't take any more. He dropped his hand from her thigh and fondled her bundle of nerves, pushing her closer to the edge with him. She tightened around his cock, her voice strained. Valen! Ava! He moaned against her neck and squeezed her bud. She cried out, her body going rigid against him as he thrust into her, and then shattered in his arms, her legs shaking violently and core milking him, quivering around his cock. He lightly bit the back of her neck and screwed his eyes shut as he joined her, release blasting through him as he felt her shaking, heard her heart pounding and listened to her panted gasps of pleasure. Gods, she completely undid him. He held her to him, shaking with the force of his release, trembling as violently as she was in his arms, barely able to breathe. Ava placed her hands over his, holding him gently, and he sank against her, pulled her closer and refused to let go. She stroked his hands, her touch light and tender, a message to him. She wasn't going anywhere. That touched him deeply, soothed his heart and calmed his mind. 
even when he feared that she was, even when he feared he would lose her. Chapter 31 Ava sat in the black leather wingback armchair in Valen's apartment, staring out of the window at the moonlit rooftops of Rome, waiting for him to come back. Her heart beat unsteadily, loud in her ears, and it was hard to focus her mind and stop it from conjuring images that unsettled her. Visions of Benares. She pulled down a deep, slow breath, held it for a second, and then released it just as slowly. It was only a matter of time before he came for her, and he would come. Every instinct screamed that it was inevitable, and although it was all part of the plan, her plan, it still had her on edge, fighting a losing battle against fear. How many lives had she taken as an assassin? How many times had she faced odds stacked against her so strongly that she had been convinced it was the end? She had always emerged the victor, though, scraping through somehow living to see another day. How many of those days had she squandered? Now it felt as if she should have done something with them, should have saved them somehow to use them with Valen, as if they were a resource she could hoard and use as she wanted, when she wanted. Hell, she wanted more time with them. She could have it if she survived the next 24 hours. She just had to fight for it. And she would. She would fight for it with all of her heart every drop of blood in her body and breath in her lungs. No matter how frightening things got, she would keep on fighting for what she wanted. Valen. She closed her eyes and blew out her breath, wishing he was here with her. He had been reluctant to leave her alone, and she had been afraid of it too, knowing what would happen when he stepped away to the gate. The way he had savored every last second with her, as if it were their last, had left her feeling empty and bereft when he had teleported as if the connection that had been blooming between them had been severed by the distance, as if she would never see him again. She pulled her legs toward her and pressed her feet into the edge of the seat and leaned back into the chair, resting her forearms on her knees. Her eyes opened and she fixed them on Rome, aching with a need to see Valen. She would see him again. She only had to fight for it. Just one more fight, the biggest of her life. She could do it, for Valen. A noise off to her left had her gaze shooting in that direction, heart rising and warming as she looked for Valen. Purple-black smoke curled outwards from a single spot around four foot above the tiles, spreading until it was around five foot wide and eight foot high, and had formed an oval that flickered with green and violet sparks. Not Valen. Ava shot to her feet as an immaculate black Italian leather shoe emerged from the shimmering smoke the crisp leg of tailored dark silver slacks following it. Her heart lodged in her throat as her mind screamed that this was it. Benares had come for her. She steeled herself and shook away her fear and her nerves, set her face in a scowl and considered reaching for the blade strapped around her ankle beneath her black jeans. She forced herself to remain away from it, because it would be her only weapon, and Benares would easily disarm her. She needed to keep it a secret. He emerged from the portal, blush lips stretched in a warm smile that reached his green eyes, making them shimmer as brightly as the flashes of light that danced across the smoke at his back. Merrick had said that they couldn't teleport. This wasn't good. Valen was expecting to feel the ward's trigger, and return in time to follow her as Jin took her to the villa via the roads. Instead, Benares had come for her through what looked like a portal, if he took her, there was a chance Valen wouldn't be able to find her. She had only given him a vague location of the villa, because she had feared if she told him the exact one, he would go off half-cocked looking for a fight to avoid Benares taking her. Benares advanced and she backed off, but there was nowhere to go. He stood between her and the door, preening his sun-kissed hair, a smug air about him. As if he had already won, and Valen turning to his side was a sure thing now. He didn't stop when he was close to her. He kept pressing forwards, driving her back, and she gasped as her bottom and shoulders hit the wall between the window and the fireplace. His smile widened and he slowly lifted his right hand towards her face. She flinched as he stroked her cheek, the light touch repulsing her and making her stomach squirm, even as it warmed her and drove all thought of running from her mind. That's good, he murmured, and she stared up into his eyes thoughts blurring together and slipping out of focus. My angel. 
not his, never his. He lowered his head and pressed his lips to hers, and the haze in her head grew thicker, swamped all of her thoughts and replaced them with new ones, with a desire to step into his arms and give herself to him. He smiled against her mouth when she did just that, her body moving without a command from her, her arms rising to loop around his neck. He bent at the knee and scooped her up into his arms, one beneath her knees and one against her back, his mouth still fixed on hers. She sagged against him, leaning heavily against his chest, his black shirt soft against her bare arms. When he finally released her lips, she stared up at him, only able to focus on him, everything else around him a blur that meant nothing to her. My angel, he whispered, and a frown flickered on his sandy eyebrows before it melted away, but the sharp spike of anger that had entered his glowing eyes remained. Jealousy. A vision of the monster he was inside overlaid onto him, wringing his eyes with black laced with blue lightning and dark lips that concealed vicious fangs, and she pushed against his shoulders. He clucked his tongue and held her closer, kissed her again and drove her thoughts away, leaving her fighting to remember what she had been afraid of just a second ago. When he pulled back and turned with her, carrying her towards the portal, he was just a man, handsome and charming, a man who wanted her. She sighed and settled her head against his chest, aching for him, too. A warm breeze laced with the scent of metal and wood flowed over her, as purple and black mist danced around them, and then light pierced the veil and she found herself in a familiar room. His office. The haze that had been filling her mind dissipated with the portal, clearing slowly as the warmth flowed from her body and thoughts began to return. She was in his office. She looked up at Benares, in his arms. She scowled and shoved at his chest, and twisted free of his grip, landing on the gray marble floor at his feet in a crouch. She rose to her full height and glared at him. What is the meaning of this? She was surprised her fear didn't show in her voice, but it gave her the confidence to continue. She took a hard step towards him, but he stood his ground. I had a few more hours. Your work is done. Benares neatened his appearance, preening his blonde locks and smoothing his hands over the point where his black shirt met his dark silver trousers, tucking it back in. I do hate portal jumping. A necessary precaution. A male voice she didn't recognize filled the room, and she pivoted to face the owner of it. Would you rather I allowed you to drive so he could stop you before you reached here? Failure is not an option this time. Do you understand, Benares? Benares nodded and looked as if he wanted to kill the man for daring to issue orders to him. Ava stared at the newcomer. He stood off to the left of the huge ebony desk, near the bank of three windows that intersected the black wall, wrapped in a fitted black coat that was buttoned from his neck to his waist, and flared from there to reach his ankles, revealing a hint of black trousers and knee-high riding boots. The man stared at her, his pale skin a contrast against his wild black hair, and those eerie purple eyes. Had to be a trick of the light. She wished she could believe that, could fool herself into thinking he was just a man, and not another monster. He smiled at her, thin-lipped and cruel, and a cold shiver ran down her spine, chilling her blood. What happened in Tokyo? It took a moment for that question to register. But when it did, she barely contained her reaction, schooling her features at the last second so he didn't see her shock. Wraith. This was the man who had tried to kill Escher, the one who might have killed Calindria, too. She had to delay him until Valen arrived, because she knew how much the thought of saving Calindria's soul meant to him. Valen wanted to give her peace, and this man was the key to making that happen. Ava tipped her chin up and kept her cool. They thwarted your plan, that's what happened. Escher is fine. His smile turned colder, his purple eyes brighter. Fine is not a word I would associate with that god. He sighed and flicked a piece of lint off the breast of his black coat with the air of a man trying to let something roll off his back and not bother him, when it was annoying the hell out of him. Never mind. It would have been my head on the butcher's block if I had succeeded. She would have been a little annoyed with me. The god is to be her pet, after all. 
Escher was meant to be someone's pet. Who's? she said without thinking, and he laughed coldly as he looked from her to Benares. Deal with her before she gets you into trouble, Incubus. She seems to have forgotten her place as a member of our side. Are your skills so lacking that you cannot even hold sway over a weak mortal? I have never understood why she favors you so much. Before she could ask another question, Benares had his hand over her mouth, his arm across her chest, pinning her back against his, and the wraith was gone. Damn it. She had the feeling that the she the wraith had spoken of wasn't her, but this woman who was meant to make Escher her pet, or another woman entirely. How many people were in their organization? Insufferable bastard, Benares muttered and huffed as he released her and stepped back. She turned to face him, a thousand questions flooding her mind, but fear stole her voice. Benares towered over her, taller than before, white embers sparking in his green eyes, and his pupils narrowed into thin slits. He glared down at her, the black around his eyes spreading and cracking, bright blue shining through the fissures. No one lectures me on how to handle my females. He shot his hand out and captured the nape of her neck, dragged her against him and had his mouth on hers before she could react. Fire blazed through her, burning away all the questions, all of her fears, replacing them with a fierce need to be closer to him, to do whatever he wanted. He kissed her deeper, making the inferno burn hotter, and she clawed at his black shirt and writhed in his arms, restless with a need for more. He broke away from her lips and breathed against them. You are mine now, angel, and I will make sure of it. He feathered his lips across hers, teasing her as he whispered, I will take you from that god. Cold swept over her skin, extinguishing the fire and everything that had seemed so urgent a moment ago was inconsequential as she stared up into Benares's eyes, eyes that glowed with a dark and terrible need. Hers widened. He was going to kill Valen. Chapter 32 It hadn't been difficult to find the villa based on the information Ava had given to him, or at least it shouldn't have been. Feeling the wards on his apartment trigger and returning to find her gone, and no trace of the scent of demon in the area, had sent him off the deep end a little, and screwed with his senses. The need to take her back, to protect her and keep her safe, and to destroy whoever stood in his path was strong, commanding him against his will to shake the earth and the sky, unleashing his fury on this world. It had taken him twenty minutes of going in circles, draining his strength by frantically stepping from one spot to the next across the valley, before he had finally calmed enough that he could focus and use his senses again. The moment they had cleared, he had caught the coppery stench of demons in the air, and had known exactly where to go. He lingered in the shadows against the perimeter wall, tracking the demons patrolling the other side of it, and waiting for a break in them so he could pass through unnoticed. Lightning flickered around his hands, and he scrubbed it away. He needed to be covert, and that wasn't helping. He was lighting up the whole God's damned area. He tensed as his senses spiked and looked off to his left, away from the gate, into the darkness down the wooded slope. Karis had arrived as promised. His older brother had frighteningly sharp senses, able to pinpoint any one of them no matter what distance separated them. He just hoped his brother kept back until he needed him. This was his show. He supposed he had better make it look good. After all, he was meant to be here to take Ava back, and that was the perfect excuse to dispatch any wretched demon foolish enough to cross his path. No need to engage all of them, though. The ones in the house would suffice. In a single leap, he cleared the stone wall and moved through the shadows at speed, crossing the grass and following the tree-lined drive of the house. It glowed in the distance at the peak of the hill, all elegant and flashy, a fucking palace compared to his apartment. He hoped to the gods Ava wasn't impressed by such material things. He doubled that hope with a prayer when he passed the black Lamborghini parked next to a yellow Ferrari on the gravel in front of the yellow ochre mansion. A shriek pierced the night. Ava. All attempts to be covert shattered, and lightning forked from his hands cracking and snapping as it struck the ground around him. He was coming.
Two demon males at the grand entrance of the villa peered around the perfectly trimmed topiary, stared at him with disbelief written across both of their faces, and then sprang into action. The bastards opened fire. Not what he had expected, given that Benares wanted him here. Bullets sprayed everywhere, plowing up the gravel and the grass beyond it, and shouts came from all directions as an alarm sounded. Valen snarled and stepped, appeared on the roof of the porch above the two demons, and let loose. The lamps that hung from the underside of the roof shattered, and the males screamed as electricity arced from them and hit them in the back. Smoke curled from their black fatigues, and he called more power forth, funneling it all into them. They fell to the ground, convulsing violently. He grinned. A bullet ripped into his right thigh. His grin faded as he looked down at the dark wet patch spreading across his black combat trousers, and then up at the male who had dared to shoot him. The demon's handgun shook as he stood on the other side of the elegant stone balustrade that formed a border around the huge paved area in front of the house. Valen clucked his tongue and lifted his hand, causing the demon to tense. When nothing happened, the male relaxed. Big mistake. Valen clicked his fingers. A thick white-purple bolt shot down from the sky and hit the demon. He didn't stop to watch the fireworks. He leaped down to the gravel, landing with a grunt and a grimace. No fucking way he could fight with a bullet lodged in his thigh. He growled from between clenched teeth and checked his surroundings, pinpointing all the demons in the vicinity. There were more inside, but they weren't moving, were obviously waiting for him. The ones outside were still at a distance, but they were heading towards him. He had time. He stuck his finger in the tear in his trousers and widened it a little, just enough for him to see the hole in his thigh. He curled his lip, hesitated for only a heartbeat, and then jammed his index finger into the wound. White-hot pain blazed outwards from it, chasing up and down his leg, turning his stomach. Had to be done. He swallowed hard, closed his eyes as the world pitched and rolled in time with his stomach, and kept on digging, pushing deeper. His finger hit something solid. Metal. It started as a low growl in his chest as he called on his power, focused it so it wrapped around the bullet and drew it to him, and came out as a roar as he yanked his hand away from his leg, tearing the damn thing free of his flesh. Heat spilled down his thigh, and he breathed hard as he pressed a hand against it. Motherfucker. He fumbled in his side pocket with his other hand, found a wad of material he always kept there, his own version of an emergency medical kit, and quickly pressed it against the wound. Pain throbbed through his bones, but it slowly abated, falling to a level he could manage. Valen undid his belt, whipped it free of the loops, and secured it around his thigh, using it to keep the wad of black cotton in place. He straightened and tested his leg, placing some weight on it. It burned with each step, but it was better than before. Satisfied that it wouldn't slow him down, he turned as casually as he could towards the mansion and walked up the steps, forcing himself to move without a limp. Damned if he was going to show these bastards that he was hurting. He was a god. He prowled through the huge door and into the building. The brightness of the foyer stung his eyes, the light from the crystal and gold chandelier reflecting off the white marble floor, and he raised a hand to shield them as they adjusted to it. Movement on his senses had him tensing, preparing. Any second now. A hail of bullets rained down on him, and he growled as he shoved both of his hands forward. A web of lightning exploded from his hands, forming a net in front of him, and the bullets dropped from the air as they connected with it, their momentum and their metal feeding the barrier. He pushed his hands forward again and the web spread, rushing towards the two demon males that stood on the balcony at the top of the twin staircases that curved up the pale yellow walls, and the two bastards beneath it on the same level as him. The male in the lower left dodged behind the wall, and the one at the top escaped into a room, but the other two weren't so fortunate. The second demon on the balcony screamed as the lightning wrapped around him, and the remaining one below kicked off to his right, but the web caught his leg and he shrieked as he went down. Valen closed his eyes and focused on the mansion and tracking Ava. She was here somewhere. Where? He had to find her. His internal radar was still. Why couldn't he sense her? She had to be here still. All he could sense were demons. He growled through clenched teeth and focused harder, shutting out the two demons as they ran, the third as he crumpled into a heap, and the fourth as he dragged himself away along a corridor. 
Valen frowned, drew down a deep breath and thought about Ava, about her scent. It was hard with the stench of demons and the tang of his lightning filling the air. His frown flickered. Roses. And sin. Ava. He launched forwards, towards the corridor the injured demon was taking, and bolted down it, dispatching the demon with a flick of his right wrist that sent five small arcs of lightning shooting towards him. The male bellowed and then silence reigned. Filled with the sound of Valen's rapid breathing and racing heart as he checked each room that led off the pale green corridor, the sound of a struggle came from ahead. His eyes fixed on the wooden door there. He stepped and appeared in front of it and kicked it open so hard it flew off the hinges and shot across the room. A male with hair that faded from black at his roots to crimson dodged it, ducking to his right as it flew over his left shoulder, and slammed into the black wall behind the ebony desk that took up a large section of the room. A demon. He turned glowing green-white eyes on Valen and sneered, his black lips peeling back off all sharp teeth and the blue lightning that forked from around his eyes shone brighter against its obsidian backdrop. Benares, he presumed. Valen's gaze sought Ava, which earned him a snarl from Benares. The bastard didn't have to worry. Valen would get to him soon enough. Relief swept through him when he spotted Ava sitting on the floor beside the desk on the left side of the room, her blue eyes fixed on him, as round as full moons. Jin stood behind her, dressed like a slut as always, wearing a tiny dark crimson dress and thigh-high matching red boots, her blonde hair draped over her breasts. Her blue eyes locked on him for a second before they slid to Benares. Valen curled his fingers into tight fists and gave the bastard the whole of his attention. Let her go, he barked. Benares smiled wickedly. I cannot do that, but I will offer you an exchange. Your life in exchange for hers. No, Ava screamed and shot to her feet. Benares backhanded her and she collapsed to her knees, hitting the pale gray marble tiles with a harsh thud. Son of a bitch, Valen growled and stepped forwards, arcs of electricity twining around his arms and snapping against his skin as his rage boiled back to the surface. You lay a fucking hand on her again and I will end you. Benares had the audacity to laugh at that. <laughs> I would love to see you try, but we are not here to fight. We are here to do business. Pledge yourself to us and she will be spared. The relief in Ava's eyes said that she had been convinced Benares meant to kill him, and that had his mouth moving before the fragment of sense that remained in his thick skull could speak up and convince him to stick to the plan. She'll be safe if I kill you. Valen shot his hands forwards and lightning arced from his fingers, six bolts twining together to form one, aimed at Benares's chest. Benares didn't move to block or evade. Valen grinned, piece of cake. That grin died as his lightning hit an invisible barrier and shot back at him, and he had to throw himself on the ground to avoid the blast. White-purple arcs scorched the walls as they hit it, leaving smoldering circles in the black plaster. Valen looked across at Benares as he pushed back onto his feet. Hexagonal glyphs shimmered across the air between them, pale blue and lasting only as long as it took for the ripples created by his attack to pass over them. The damned barrier stretched the width of the room, and from the floor to the ceiling. Fuck. Ava was on the other side of that barrier. He tried to step through it, but when he reappeared he was stood against the invisible wall. He couldn't get to her. Rage curled through his blood, setting it on fire, and he snarled and banged his fists against it. Ava stared up at him, fear shining in her eyes, fear he wanted to take away, but he couldn't. He couldn't do anything for her. He shifted his gaze to Benares and growled at the bastard. Benares shook his head and sighed. Did you really think it would be that easy? Valen shrugged, but it was stiff. His body coiled tight with a need to attack. I had kind of hoped it would be, yeah. He looked off to his left, to the windows there. If he went outside the building, he could teleport back into it on the other side of the barrier. He eyed where it was, tipped his head back, and checked out the ceiling. I can assure you, there is not a crack you can exploit. My sister is very good at what she does. 
Jin blushed and stared at Benares with the same moon eyes that Ares gave Megan. Sick. He curled his lip at the bitch, and she just smiled at him. Her laugh grated down his spine. We have something you want. All you have to do is work for us, she said, her smile holding, her blue eyes shining brightly as she swayed her hips and flicked her fall of blonde hair over her left shoulder. You do want her, don't you? Valen looked down at Ava where she still knelt on the floor, locking eyes with her. More than anything in this world. Benares growled and Ava flinched, and Valen shot him a glare. Something was going on, something he wasn't aware of and wanted to know about right now, because from where he was standing it looked as if Benares wanted Ava for himself. Over Valen's dead body. Even then he wouldn't let Benares have her. He would make his father release his soul from the underworld so he could kill the bastard from beyond the grave. What about more than anything in your world? Benares hissed and pushed away from the desk, coming to stand opposite him. Gods, Valen wanted to punch him. Stupid barrier. He was going to find a way to get rid of it, and then it was lights out for Benares. The bastard smirked at him. Do you want her more than, say, your sister's soul? Valen had to take a step back to brace himself as that hit him, and he saw in Benares' eyes that he was being serious. You fucking son of a bitch! Valen flew at the barrier, raining blows down on it that sent sparks of lightning flying in all directions. He felt his teeth shift, and his eyes joined them as his fury got the better of him, the need to find Kalindria's soul seizing control of him and demanding he beat the location out of the bastard. That need warred with the need he felt to do anything to save Ava, to take her back from Benares and keep her safe, protecting her as he had promised. But Kalindria, it tore him in two, ripping his heart straight down the middle as he battered the barrier, hammering it so hard that his hands hurt. We could get that soul for you, Benares whispered, not moving from his spot on the other side of the invisible wall that separated them, not even flinching as Valen rained unholy hell down upon it, desperately trying to break through. Gods, that was so tempting. His punches slowed as that temptation swept through him, whispering seductive words in his ear and to his heart. If he could get Kalindria's soul back, if he could save her, the redemption he had always desired would be his. Don't do it, Ava hollered and pushed forwards, coming to the barrier and pressing her hands to it. He looked down at her, his ears ringing and shoulders slumping as his fight left him. Don't do it. Ava's eyes narrowed with her frown, and she shook her head. We will help her somehow, but not this way. She wouldn't want it this way. Valen stared at her. She was right. Shut up, Benares snarled, grabbed hold of her black hair and hauled her onto her feet, twisting her to face him. Good angels know when to be fucking quiet. Valen lost it when Benares backhanded her and she screamed, falling for a moment before the demon pulled her back onto her feet and struck her again and again, until her lips were bloodied and her left eye began to swell, a cut near it pouring blood down her cheek. Get the fuck off her! He pressed his hands to the barrier and put all he had into it, unleashing as much power as he could in his limited state. Limited. He growled and reached for the band around his left wrist and froze with his fingers against it, duty and desire pulling him in two opposite directions. He couldn't. If he did, his brothers would never forgive him. His father would never forgive him. His mother, too. God's damn it! He bellowed and hit the barrier again, lighting it up with more juice this time, cracking a few of the bright blue hexagonal glyphs. But it still didn't break. He sank to his knees, breathing hard, his heart laboring as pain devoured it. His brothers would never forgive him for this, either. His father would never forgive him. His mother, too. But he had to do it. He shook his head and pressed his hands to the barrier. Stop. I'll join you. Just don't hurt her anymore. Benares released her and she collapsed in a heap on the floor, her left eye swollen and dark, and blood covering that side of her face. It dripped from her lips onto the marble tiles, forming a stark crimson pool. Ava, 
he whispered and shuffled so he was in front of her. Look at me, Ava. She continued staring straight ahead, her right eye glassy and empty. Damn it. Ava! He banged his fists against the barrier. Look at me. Please. He sagged and leaned against the barrier, pressing his forehead to it, his rage draining from him together with his strength as he stared at her, willing her to respond, because he couldn't lose her. Ava weakly lifted her head and her lips moved silently. He growled and shot to his feet, flashing fangs at Benares. Let me through. Let me get to her. I need to see she's going to be okay. Benares sneered at him, flashing his own sharp teeth, and that look entered his eyes again, the one that said he wanted Ava to belong to him. Never. She was his and she always would be. He would kill anyone who stood between them or tried to take her from him. He growled again as he remembered he had promised Karis that he wouldn't kill Benares. Fucking damn it. Fine. Benares got a stay of execution, and he would be a good boy for once. And then, as soon as they had all the information they could get out of him, he would kill him. Benares would die for what he had done to Ava. Ava, he rasped, and she frowned, moaned, and tried to get up. But she collapsed back against the floor. Her cheek landed in the blood. He returned his gaze to Benares. Let me in. Why don't we sweeten the deal? Say the words to pledge your allegiance to us, and you can have Ava. And me too. Jin moved to stand between Ava and Benares, her red lips curved in a sultry smile, and blue eyes promising all the pleasure he could ever desire. It made him want to vomit. Benares stepped forwards towards the barrier. But either Valen's head was more screwy than usual because he was barely keeping a leash on his temper, or the demon was slowing down, moving through the air as if it was molasses. The hairs on the back of Valen's neck prickled and rose on end. Karis. His power flowed over the building, and it should have brought everyone except those Karis had made exempt from it to a halt. Yet Benares and Jin were still moving. Ava, too. The prickle danced down his spine as her face darkened, her eyes on Jin, and she reached for her ankle. She was on her feet a moment later, a war cry leaving her lips and rage burning in her eyes. Something flashed in her hand as she brought it up. A blade. Valen threw his hands toward the barrier to pound on it and stop her. Ava brought the blade up as Jin slowly turned towards her, blue eyes enormous and red lips parting in shock. The knife struck hard, plunging deep into Jin's side. Valen's hands went straight through the barrier and landed on Benares' chest. Jin screamed as she toppled and Ava went down with her behind Benares. Benares stared down at his chest, at Valen's hands, and roared as he shoved his own hands forwards, catching Valen hard in his own chest before he could unleash even a tiny bolt of lightning into the bastard. Valen flew across the room and grunted as he slammed into the wall and dropped to his knees. Jin had created the barrier, and she must have been maintaining it by focusing on whatever power had called it forth, constantly nurturing and repairing it. Ava had shattered that focus. She had found a way to let him in. Ava pushed up and pulled the blade out, and Valen felt a little hot all over as she tossed her head back, her blue-streaked black hair flying in slow motion as Karis's power increased in strength and began to slow even her, and she unleashed another battle cry and brought the blade down again, thrusting it to the hilt between Jin's breasts. Sweet gods. He shouldn't be as aroused as this on the battlefield. It was wrong on so many levels, but he just couldn't help himself as he watched her fight. It wasn't only her prowess as a warrior that had him flustered, though. It was her fury at the succubus's offer to be his lover, too. His little assassin wanted him all to herself, would kill anyone who stood between them. Damn, he loved her. He grinned and kicked off, launching himself at Benares. Once they had him subdued, Karis could question him. Valen stopped mid-stride, grinding to a halt just a few feet from Benares. Benares stood in the middle of the room, green eyes wide as he stared down at his chest, at the wet patch spreading across his black shirt. Valen's eyes leaped to Jin and the blade sticking out of her chest. Fuck. They were more than brother and sister. They were bound. No. 
Benares laughed, black blood trickling from his obsidian lips as he touched the wet spot on his chest and brought his hand away, and stared at his black-stained fingertips. He lifted his green eyes from them to Valen. It wasn't meant to end like this. We were meant to rule this world, he whispered, and the black around his eyes faded, the blue lightning disappearing, and his green eyes dulled. She promised. He collapsed, landing hard on the marble floor, and grunted as he twisted onto his back and reached for Jin. Jin reached for him, stretched her arm as far as it would go, and her fingers twitched and then stilled as her hand dropped to the floor. Benares took hold of her hand and clutched it. She promised. No, fuck it, no! Valen's knees hit the marble tiles next to Benares, and he took hold of his shoulders and shook him, staring down into his fading eyes. I need answers, you fucking bastard. Benares sank back against the tiles and exhaled on a sigh. No heartbeat reached Valen's ears. Fuck. He shoved away from Benares and growled as he paced the room. I didn't know, Ava whispered, and he stopped and looked down at her and let all of his rage drain away. Her right eye was wide, a flicker of fear in it, remorse and guilt, and he sighed as he sank down into a crouch beside her. I'm sorry. He shook his head and wanted to growl as he touched her cut cheek, just below her swollen left eye, and she flinched. I know. I didn't know either. None of us did. But now he had no demon to hand over to Karis and they had no leads to go on. The wraith was here, Ava said, dragging his focus back to her, and he stared at her, reeling a little as that sank in. You saw him, he said, and she nodded. Clearly? He was in this room. You could describe him, like a photo-fit thing mortal police do. When she nodded, the ache in his chest eased just a little, because at least they had something they could work on something that might help them uncover who was behind the plot to destroy the gates. She eased closer to him, and he tore a strip off his black t-shirt and used it to carefully clean the blood off her cheek. There's another thing, too. She flinched when he dabbed a little too hard in response to that, and he issued a silent apology to her. The Wraith mentioned a woman, too, and I have the feeling she's higher up the command chain, because he was worried he had killed Escher. What does Escher have to do with this? His blood ran cold at the thought of anyone targeting his brother. Escher was a ticking bomb on the best of days, and when he came around from recovering from the Wraith's attack, it was not going to be a good day. Ava winced as she touched her split lip. The Wraith said Escher was to be her pet. Pet? What the fuck did that mean? It conjured images of this mystery woman holding Escher captive, chained, and like hell he was going to let that sort of thing happen to his brother again. We need to tell Karis. Gods, he's going to tear me a new one for this, though. Valen stood and held his hand out to Ava. Tear you a new one for what? Karis's deep voice rolled through the room. Valen tensed as Ava placed her hand into his and slowly pulled her onto her feet, turning a sheepish smile on his older brother at the same time. Karis looked from him to the two dead demons, rolled his eyes, and pinched the bridge of his nose as he sighed. They were bound, Ava said before he could even try to explain, and stepped in front of him. Fighting in his corner? Gods, it had been a long time since anyone had done that, and it felt so good that he wanted to grin at his brother and then kiss her. She folded her arms across her chest. I did it. So if you're going to be angry with anyone, be angry with me. Fuck, he did love this woman. Kara shot her an irritated look that melted away as he really took a look at her and spotted her injuries. We need to take you to Megan. Valen frowned at that. He was pretty sure that if he had been the one in Ava's position and had killed Jin and accidentally Benares in the process, that his big brother would have been close to losing his temper, not fussing over his injuries. He glared at Karis. Plus, fussing over Ava was his job. Temper, Karis murmured, and Valen reined it in just this once. We did get some new information about the Wraith, and that there's a female targeting Escher. 
Valen pulled down a breath to steady his heart and considered not mentioning everything else that happened, but he couldn't hold it in. He didn't want to keep things from his brothers anymore, no longer wanted that divide between them. It had almost cost him everything. He glanced down at Ava, grew some balls, and put it all out there. Benares said he could get Calindria's soul. Valen raked a hand over his hair as Merrick walked in just in time to hear that, wiping black blood off his hands. He offered to get it for me, and I couldn't do it. I could have saved her. Karis crossed the room to him, placed his right hand on his left shoulder, and squeezed it gently. You did the right thing, Valen. We will save her one day, but not like that. The warmth in his green eyes, the relief that shone there, told Valen that he meant every word. We will find the wraith who killed her, and we will free her soul. But we will do it together, as brothers. Karis gave his shoulder another squeeze. As family. The only reason there were tears stinging Valen's eyes was because Karis was a dick and squeezed too hard, hurting him. It had nothing to do with what he had said. Absolutely nothing. Really. His big brother hadn't just made him go all teary-eyed by spouting shit about them being brothers and family. Not wanting to look like a sentimental prick, he cleared his throat and played it cool, even when Merrick shot him a sly smile that he knew was meant to be teasing. Fucker. We should gather everyone to discuss this, because it has become clear we are facing an entire organization, and we are yet to meet its ringleader. Karis looked back at Merrick, whose brown eyes got that twisted glow they had whenever he was being told to scour their database and do research. Merrick nodded. Let us meet in Tokyo. Valen nodded. Karis and Merrick both stepped, and Valen went to gather Ava into his arms and follow them, intent on getting her to Megan so the carrier could heal her wounds. Ava placed a hand against his chest, stopping him, and looked up into his eyes. I need a moment, alone, with you. His heart pounded hard, and he told himself not to read into it, that it wasn't going to be anything bad, and he wasn't going to lose her. But old habits died the hardest, and fear trickled through his veins, chilling his blood. He nodded stiffly, gathered her into his arms, and stepped, landing on the hilltop overlooking Rome. She didn't help matters by pushing out of his arms the second they landed and pacing across the grass. Gods. He swallowed hard and tried to steal his heart, but it was already falling apart, that dark voice at the back of his mind spreading poison through his blood that weakened it and pushed him to the verge of breaking. Her job was done, contract fulfilled, and Benares was dead, no longer a threat to her. But she loved him, didn't she? Didn't she? He stared at her, breathing hard as he fought for air desperately trying to calm his mind so he could think rationally and not let his fears sweep him along. They were too powerful, though. He couldn't lose her. Ava. She cut him off. I'm sorry. Gods. She really was going to leave him. He growled and lightning struck hard all around them, tearing up the earth and filling the air with the scent of it. Rain lashed down, saturating them both and she recoiled and turned in all directions as more lightning strikes connected, shaking the ground beneath their feet. Valen, she shouted, and did the most wonderful thing. She ran to him and cupped his cheeks in her palms, the fear shining in her eyes, not fear of the lightning nor fear of him. She feared for him. What's wrong? He couldn't bring himself to say it, because he was no longer sure it was true, and he didn't want her to laugh at him if it wasn't. He wasn't sure he could take her laughing at him. She wouldn't mean to hurt him with it, but it would cut him deeply nonetheless. He glared down at her. She smoothed her left fingers across his brow, easing his frown away, so much concern in her eyes and all aimed at him. When she was hurt, her left eye swollen and cheek bruised and lips split. She should have been more concerned about herself. Gods, it hurt to look at her. To see her injured and know if he had been stronger, smarter, she might have been fine, spared the pain and the fear she must have felt. He narrowed his eyes on her wounds and cursed himself. Why do you always make yourself look that way? 
Why must you always try to look so frightening? There is a good heart in here. She dropped her right hand to his chest. He sneered at her as that heart she had spoken of so softly ached a little fiercer, and fear brought his barriers shooting up around it, centuries of shielding it controlling him, and making him snarl at her even when he only wanted to hold her and make her love him. I don't have a heart, he growled, and in part it was true, but not in the way he wanted her to believe. Haven't you figured that out yet? His soul whispered the true meaning of his words to her. Hadn't she figured out that he had no heart because he had given it to her? She spread her fingers outwards, covering more of his chest, and that heart pounded against her palm, desperate to reach her. Her blue eyes held his. Yes, I have figured you out. I just don't quite understand you yet. I don't understand why you act the way you do, why you pretend to be something you aren't, and why you push people away like you're trying to push me away. That isn't you. Gods, he didn't want that. He wanted to fall to his knees, wrap his arms around her waist, and do whatever it took to make her stay. But the fear of losing her was too strong. It was fear that had been carved in that moment centuries ago, given form and control over him, and it had festered inside him ever since, eating away at him. He was so tired of it, but he wasn't sure he had the strength to take that necessary but difficult first step towards overcoming it. It is he said when all he wanted to do was tell her that she was right, and long ago he had been a different man, and he wanted to be that man again. It is me, and it has been since. Stop punishing yourself, she whispered, but she might as well have shouted because he rocked back on his heels, shaken by the force of her words. Valen, you don't have to keep punishing yourself. You reacted the way anyone would have. He looked away from her. Not my brothers, or my parents. None of them would have done what I did. None of them. And I'm not sure they can forgive me. Gods, that had been hard to say, because he had threaded it with a hope, a need he was sure she would see. He wanted their forgiveness. For killing the Mwari? She frowned at him. Valen shook his head. I should have stopped her. I knew what she was going to do, and I should have stopped her. I never should have let her go. Her blue eyes softened, and he didn't pull away when she raised her hands back to his face and held his cheeks. He took all the comfort she offered, pulled it deep into his soul, and tried to patch up his heart with it. You can't think like that. Her eyes searched his, and she sighed. The fault lies with, don't you blame her, he snapped and lightning struck all around them, harsh flashes illuminating her wet face. Another sigh escaped her. I wasn't going to. I was going to say that it lies with whoever killed her, not you. You can't carry the weight of this alone, Valen, and you don't have to. He clenched his fists when all he wanted to do was reach out and take hold of her, to apologize for being so messed up that he was lashing out at her when he didn't even know why she had brought him here. Everything about her actions said it hadn't been to dump his arse as he had thought. Now she was trying to piece his heart back together for him, gently encouraging him to take that first step towards crossing the divide between him and his brothers and healing their bonds. She was giving him all of her strength. Fuck, he loved her for that. Who's going to carry it with me? He ignored how his voice shook uncertainty and hope mingling in it to make him sound pathetic. Your brothers, he snorted. They blame me too. Ava planted her hands on her hips and scowled at him, frustration darkening her eyes and warning him he was pushing too hard, needed to rein it back before he did end up driving her away. You want them to blame you, but they don't. Your brothers do love you. She caught his cheek when he went to look away, her touch firmer this time, and brought his head back around so his eyes met hers again. There was that temper he found so damn alluring. She looked ready to tear him a new one, or kiss the hell out of him. They love you, and they worry about you. I worry about you. Stop punishing yourself. Stop seeing what you want to see. 
I didn't ask you to bring me here so I could turn against you, Stronzo. Ah, she did have him figured out after all. He got the feeling that he would never be able to slip anything past her, that she would always read him like an open book, no matter how well he tried to hide his feelings. She had possessed that talent from the night their paths had first crossed in front of the Pantheon, and he felt blessed that whoever had created her for him, they had made her perfect in every way. A woman who could see through him, straight down to his heart, and didn't take any shit from him. Or his brothers. Open your eyes, Valen, and see the truth for once. Her soft voice coaxed him back to her, and he looked down into her eyes, trying to spot what she was talking about. The truth? She nodded and faltered, and did she look nervous now? God's damn it. If she was going to leave him after all, Rome was about to get hit with a cataclysmic storm. Why did you bring me here? He couldn't hold on any longer without knowing, because he wasn't going to be able to get a hold of his temper and clamp down on it until she came out with it. Her eyebrows rose. To apologize for not being able to detain the wraith long enough for you to get there while he was still around. I didn't want to mention it in front of your brothers because there's that thing where none of you seem to want to mention your sister in front of Callistos. Oh, that was why she had wanted to be alone with him. And, she said and tailed off, looked away from him and fiddled with her lip, suddenly fascinated with the cut in it. He wanted to take her to Megan whenever he looked at her cut lip and swollen eye, but he knew Ava, and she would fight him if he took her anywhere before she was ready, before she had said all that she needed to say. And, he parroted her, and wasn't sure he could wait to hear it, because a tight feeling had settled in his chest, squeezing his heart, and he might die if she kept him waiting, or if it was just another apology. The truth is, Valen, she whispered, but her voice slowly gained strength and volume as she turned back to face him and lifted her eyes back to his. The truth is, your family loves you which is more than I've ever had. And you're a good man. And I... I... You what? He said, maybe a little too harshly, judging by how she glared at him. He wasn't trying to rush her. Much. Her pretty face screwed up. Frustration flashed in her eyes, and she grabbed his cheeks, pulled him down to her, and whispered against his lips. Ti amo. Her mouth was on his before he could utter a word her tongue stealing all of his focus as it traced his lower lip, and he somehow managed to restrain himself even when his heart was screaming at him to hold her tightly and make her know he felt the same way, that she was everything to him and he was never letting her go. Rather than crushing her to his chest, he carefully wrapped his arms around her and lifted her up and kissed her softly, tenderly, so he didn't open the cut on her lip, because no way in hell he could ever hurt her because he loved her. He poured it into the kiss as he held her to him, her legs around his waist and the rain pouring down on them. Lightning chased across the sky, making the air hum with its power, but not his body this time. That hummed with the joy Ava had given him, two simple Italian words that had pieced his heart back together and given him the strength to move forwards, towards a day when he would be the male he had once been, the male he wanted to be for her. And on that day, when he was good enough for her, when he was the male that she deserved, he would tell her, in a language she understood. He was going to have to pay penitence for this, but fucking hell, it would be worth it. He smiled against her lips, carefully covered her ears to protect them, and whispered in the tongue of the underworld, I love you too. The End This has been Valen, Guardians of Hades Romance Series, written by Felicity Heaton, narrated by Eric G. Dove, copyright 2017-2018 by Felicity Heaton, production copyright 2018 by Felicity Heaton.